happens is, depending upon the distance between the uh, Earth and the Moon, at the time when the eclipse happens, uh, you can be in also this kind of a situation. Okay, So as I explained, this is the region where you can see a complete blockage of the sun. right? But then there is another region which can form in between if there is a large distance between the Earth and the Moon. Okay, And so this particular region is called the Antambra. Okay? And in this particular region, what happens is if you, if, if you are in this particular region, then um, you will see the entire full moon on top of the sun's disk. Okay? And so there is some region of the sun which is still visible the, on, at the borders. Okay? And so this doesn't call the full blockage of the sun. It's still a partial blockage of the sun. But instead of seeing um, uh, like a half disk, which you are seeing here, what you see is um, the full moon's disk overlapping uh, the solar disk as well. Okay, so you start to see the border of the sun um, in this particular region. Here. Okay, so this region is called the Antambra, and then you still have a penumbra uh, where you will see a partial solar eclipse. Okay, um, so today's situation. Let's look at what is happening today, right? So in today's situation, what you will find is that we are very close to the apex of this umbra. Okay? So this apex of the umbra is very close to touching the surface of the Earth. And so at this point of time, what happens is the moon is going to mostly block out the sun. The region around um, the sun which remains is very, very tiny. Okay? And so this can give you an appearance of a ring of fire as well. Okay? Um, and so that's very, very special. It, it requires a lot of fine tuning, right? It requires the moon to be at the right distance. Uh, and so, and you to be present at that particular location as well. So this location is going to be in the Northern parts of India. So they will see um, uh, mo uh, mostly the sun will be mostly blocked, uh, but they will see a slight ring outside as well. Uh, Surud, yes. there is one request from our viewers that can you also give us a short summary of what you said so far in Hindi? Oh, in Hindi. Um, okay, <laughs> Hindi is not that great. Uh, so let me try. Okay. Um, Anik so there, can uh, try. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted to tell you that this is the reason why the reason why the is um, सूर्य और पृथ्वी के बीच में आ, जब चंद्र आता है आ, तो ये ग्रहण होते हैं तो आ, आप इस डायग्राम में ये देख सकते हैं कि यहाँ पे सूर्य है यहाँ पे चंद्र है और यहाँ पे अपनी पृथ्वी है तो यहाँ पे ये जो क्षेत्र है इधर आप अगर रहेंगे आ, तो सूर्य की जो पूरी डिस्क है वो आपको दिखाई नहीं देगी उसमें से कोई भी किरण आपके पास आ नहीं पाएगा ये जो छाया वाला पोजीशन बेसिकली यहां पे अगर आप अगर आप जाओ एक्चुअली सी इस तरह ट्रैवलिंग फ्रॉम वेस्ट टू ईस्ट ओवर द अगर आप सूर्य की तरफ जो इन अदर वर्ड्स यू विल आल्सो बी सीइंग एक मिरर से आप उसकी प्रतिमा बना सकते हैं अगर आप ऐसे देखेंगे तो इस तरह का चित्र आपको दिखाई देगा लेकिन ये छाया की बजाय अगर आप इधर आ, आ, रहते हो आ, इसको उपछाया कहते हैं आई थिंक <laughs> तो ये जो उपछाया के क्षेत्र में अगर आप होंगे तो आपको इस तरह का सूर्य ग्रहण दिखाई देगा जहां पे पार्शियली कवर होगा ये जो चंद्रमा है वो सूर्य को पार्शियली कवर करे ठीक है आ, लेकिन आप आ, कभी कभी आ, ये जो uh, अंतर है चंद्रमा और पृथ्वी के बीच का uh, ये फिक्स नहीं है ये जो अंतर है वो चेंज uh, होते रहता है मतलब उसमें बदल होता है uh, तो अगर ये अंतर जो है वो ज्यादा हो गया uh, तो कभी-कभी ये जो क्षेत्र uh, है जहां पे आपको पूरी तरह से सूर्य नहीं दिखाई देता है वो पृथ्वी के ऊपर गिरता नहीं है उसके बजाय आप इस क्षेत्र uh, में रहते हो जिसको हम प्रति छाया कहते हैं और अगर ये प्रति छाया के क्षेत्र में आप होंगे तो आपको चंद्र का जो चंद्र की डिस्क है वो पूरी तरह से कवर नहीं करती है सूर्य को लेकिन पार्शियली कवर करती है और ये जो पार्शियल कवरेज है ये इधर के पार्शियल कवरेज से थोड़ा सा अलग है क्योंकि 
यहाँ पे आपको चंद्रमा की पूरी डिस्क दिखाई देगी सूर्य के डिस्क के ऊपर तो ये जो है इसको एनुलर सोलर एक्लिप्स कहते हैं लेकिन आज का जो इवेंट है वो थोड़ा स्पेशल है क्योंकि ना ही हम चंद्र के काफी करीब है ना ही काफी दूर है तो इसलिए ये जो रीजन है ये हम ये जो एपेक्स है इस कोन का यानी कि सॉरी मुझे कोई हेल्प कर सकता है या समीर या अनिकेत ये जो त्रिकोण का जो पॉइंट है ये जो पॉइंट है वो पृथ्वी के सतल पर गिरने वाला है तो ये जो पॉइंट है कि ये छाया है एक शंकु की तरह होती है और शंकु का ये सबसे ऊपरी बिंदु जो है इसको एपेक्स कहते हैं या ये जो एपेक्स है वो जस्ट टच करने वाला है पृथ्वी को तो ये बहुत ही स्पेशल ऐसा ओकेजन है तो इस कारण यहाँ पे अगर आप होंगे तो आपको ये दिखाई देगा कि चंद्र जो है वो सूर्य को लगभग पूरी तरह से कवर करने वाला है लेकिन एक छोटी सी जो रिंग है बाहर वाली वो आपको दिखाई देने वाली है तो ये जो चित्र है ये ऐसे चित्र हमें भारत के पूर्वी जो राज्य है हरियाणा वहां पे आपको फॉर एग्जांपल दिखाई देंगे हरियाणा उत्तराखंड एज वेल आई थिंक लेकिन पुणे से जहाँ पे हम जहाँ से अभी ब्रॉडकास्ट कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे हम इस वाले क्षेत्र में हैं तो हमें पार्शियल ब्लॉकेज दिखाई देगा तो इसका मतलब पुणे से हमें इस तरह का चित्र दिख, दिखाई देगा और अगर आप हरियाणा या जो भी एक छोटा सा एरिया है भारत में ये बेल्ट जो है एनुलर इक्लिप्स का वो राजस्थान के कुछ जिलों में जिलों में शुरू होगा फिर हरियाणा पंजाब हिमाचल प्रदेश और उत्तराखंड से होके वो नेपाल में जाएगा तो क्योंकि ये जो हम बहुत ही स्पेशल ऐसे केस में हैं इसलिए ये जो स्ट्रिप है वो बहुत ही छोटी है तो यू हैव टू बी मतलब आपको जो जगह है जहां पे वो छाया गिरने वाली है एग्जैक्टली exactly अगर आप वहां पे होंगे तो ये दृश्य दिखाई देगा आप अगर थोड़ा सा एक सौ किलोमीटर ऊपर या सौ किलोमीटर नीचे रहेंगे तो आपको ये जो पार्शियल ब्लॉक ये जो कंप्लीट ब्लॉकेज है वो नहीं दिखाई देगा जस्ट पार्शियली ब्लॉक दिखाई देगा ओके सुरुद वी विल कम बैक टू यू बट वुड आइदर समीर और प्रोफेसर राज चौधरी कैन यू गिव अ शॉर्ट समरी इन बांग्ला एज वेल ओ अच्छा ओके आई आई कैन ट्राई दैट इट सूर्य ग्रहण आज के बलय ग्रहण आज के पूर्ण बलय ग्रहण बलय ग्रहण है जो चाँद आसे सूर्य और पृथ्वी मजखने छवि सूर्य हे हलदे पृथ्वी देखान एक नील गोल गोलकार गोलकृति इन आसले सूर्य पृथ्वी जे जेटा आकार एकदम एखने से स्केले ना तो चाँद चाँद जो आसे सूर्य और पृथ्वी मजखने तक चाँद छाय पड़े पृथ्वी को जगह सब जैगे न खूब छोट जैगे एबार भारत उत्तर भारत पाकिस्तान एवं किचु बिल्डिस्ट जगार मध्य दिए छाय जा छाय देखते हिमालय हिमाचल प्रदेश हरियाणा और राजस्थान किस अन्न्य भारत अन्न्य जगह पूर्ण सूर्य ग्रहण देखा जाए ना पुरोटा कि आंशिक देखा जाए छायछू ना सूर्य ग्रहण शुद्ध छाय चाँद छाय पृथ्वी ऊपर छाय अनेक रकम रूप आय छवि जे रखा जा चाँद इसे गे सूर्य और पृथ्वी मजखने कंतु पूर्ण सूर्य के कवर करते जार फले आज के जेटा देखा जाए बलय ग्रहण बलय ग्रहण सूर्य पुरोपुर ढाका पड़े ना पचानब्बे शतांश ढाका पड़े एवं चाँद चारपाशे चाँद छाय चारपाशे सूर्य जो बैर अंश से देखा जाए बला है बलय ग्रहण I think that covers it. Let's move on. Uh, yeah, Surud, would you like to give a very short summary in Marathi as well? Uh, yeah. yeah. Sure. 
तर आज जे आहे ते आपण सूर्यग्रहण जे आहे ते आपण आज बघणार आहोत तिथून हा जो टेलिकास्ट आहे त्याच्यावरती आपण पूर्णपणे प्रक्षेपण करणार आहोत ज्या ज्या घडामोडी होत राहतील त्याचं तर सुरुवातीला मला हे सांगायचं होतं की हे जे सूर्यग्रहण असते ते कसं होते त्याच्यासाठी आपण या इथले जे काही चित्र आहेत ते बघू शकता इथे सूर्य आहे मग चंद्र आहे आणि मग त्याच्यानंतर इथे पृथ्वी दाखवलेली आहे तर जेव्हा चंद्र हा सूर्य आणि पृथ्वीच्या मध्ये येतो आणि बरोबर त्याची जी सावली असते ही जी छाया आहे ती जेव्हा पृथ्वीवरती पडते त्यावेळेला तिथे ग्रहण होत असं आपण म्हणतो तर आपण ग्रहण जे आहे त्या ग्रहणाच्या वेळी आपण जर ही जी छाया आहे त्या छायेच्या क्षेत्रामध्ये जर असू तर आपल्याला इथून कुठलेच सूर्यापासून येणारे किरण आहेत ते दिसणार नाहीत आणि ते दिसणार नाहीत त्याच्यामुळे आपल्याला हे जे अशा प्रकारचं चंद्र सूर्यग्रहण आहे ते दिसायला लागतं ओके की ज्याच्यामध्ये चंद्राची ही जी पूर्ण डिस्क आहे ती पूर्णपणे सूर्याला झाकून टाकते ओके पण त्याच्याऐवजी या रिजनच्या ऐवजी जर आपण इथल्या रिजन वरती असू या क्षेत्रामध्ये जर असू कुठेही तर तिथे आपल्याला असं लक्षात येईल की सूर्याची पूर्णपणे चंद्राची जी पूर्णपणे सावली आहे ती ती आपल्याला तिथे पडत नाही तर ही जी आहे सावली तिला उपछाया म्हणतात कारण की काही जो भाग आहे सूर्याचा तो हा चंद्र जो आहे तो कव्हर करतो पण इकडनं येणारे जे सूर्यकिरण असतात ते तरीही आपल्याला पोचू शकतात तर त्याच्यामुळे काही भाग कव्हर होतो आणि काही भाग नाही कव्हर होत तर त्याला आपण खंडग्रास सूर्यग्रहण असं म्हणतो तर या प्रकारचे सावलींच्या खेळामुळे आपल्याला हे सूर्यग्रहण जे आहेत ते दिसतात पण हे आपल्याला लक्षात ठेवायला पाहिजे की चंद्र जो आहे तो पृथ्वीपासून एकाच अंतरावरती नाही आहे तर तो जो फिरताना त्याचे अंतर जे आहे सूर्य पृथ्वीपासून ते थोडस बदलत राहतं आणि ते बदलल्यामुळे कधी कधी सूर्यग्रहणाच्या वेळी असं होतं की चंद्र बऱ्यापैकी लांब असतो पृथ्वीपासून आणि त्यावेळेला हा जो ही जी सावली आहे जी कोनाकृती सावली आहे चंद्राची ती आपल्या पृथ्वीवरती पडत नाही तर त्याच्याऐवजी आपल्याला ही जी प्रतिछाया आपण ज्याला म्हणू शकतो ती प्रतिछाया पडते सूर्य पृथ्वीवर आणि त्या प्रतिछायाचे जर आपण क्षेत्रामध्ये कुठे असू तर आपल्याला असं दिसून येईल की हे जी चंद्र आहे त्याचा जो पूर्ण डिस्क आहे ती आपल्याला सूर्याच्या वरती आपल्याला पूर्णपणे गोल गोलाकृती ही जी डिस्क आहे ती दिसून येते पण पूर्ण जो सूर्य आहे त्याला आपण कव्हर नाही करत तर त्याच्याऐवजी चंद्र जो आहे तो थोडासा भाग जो आहे सूर्याचा जो बाजूचा बाहेरचा बॉर्डर जे आहे ते अजूनही आपल्याला दिसून येते तर त्याला कंकणाकृती सूर्यग्रहण असं आपण म्हणतो पण आजचं जे सूर्यग्रहण आहे ते थोडस स्पेशल आहे कारण की नाही आपण खूप जवळ आहोत चंद्राच्या नाही आपण खूप दूर आहोत तर आपण बरोबर ही जी कोनाकृती जी सावली आहे त्याचा जो हा सगळ्यात वरचा जो टोकाचा भाग आहे तो जो भाग आहे तो पृथ्वीवरती पडणार आहे आणि तो भाग पृथ्वीवरती पडत असेल जर तू कुणी अगदी बरोबर त्या जागी असाल आणि ही जी जागा आहे ती राजस्थान त्याच्यानंतर हरियाणा उत्तराखंड या सगळ्या जे राज्य आहे त्या राज्यात ती तो जो बिंदू आहे तो मूव होणार आहे तर त्या जागेवर ना आपल्याला असं दिसेल की चंद्र बरोबर त्याची जी साईज आहे आणि सूर्याचा जो आपल्याला दिसणारा साईज आहे तो बरोबर मॅच्ड असेल आणि तो बरोबर मॅच असल्यामुळे बऱ्यापैकी मॅच असल्यामुळे आपल्याला या अशा प्रकारचं रिंग ऑफ फायर ज्याला म्हणतात की त्याच्या बाजूला जे सूर्याचं छोटस वलय जे आहे ते अगदी छोटस वलय आपल्याला दिसणार आहे तर अशा प्रकारचं जे सूर्यग्रहण आहे ते आज आपण बघणार आहोत ऑफकोर्स आम्ही हे जे प्रक्षेपण आहे ते पुण्यावरनं करत आहोत पण आमच्याकडे बरेचसे लाईव्ह फीड्स येत आहेत देशाच्या उत्तरा उत्तरेकडील भागातून देखील आणि त्याच्यामुळे आपण तिथन जे काही मिळणार आहेत तेही आपल्याला आपणापर्यंत आपण पोहोचवणार आहोत तर तुम्ही जस्ट हा Uh, yeah so in many of uh, our viewers are wondering why we have not switched to live feed yet so we we just want to tell them that as uh, they might have guessed 
at several places uh, clouds are playing spoil sport yes. so we are just waiting in fact we are seeing a cross section of the spherical object which is the moon and it has contour of valleys and mountains around it so those there there is minuscule notches here are those all right so we are a feed where uh, there is no cloud cover and we can see live pictures as soon as we get those pictures we will switch to those uh, those pictures that's right i think i think we can uh, uh, we should uh, uh, find one uh, i can't believe that it's entirely cloudy from all the way from rajasthan to uttarakhand and everywhere uh, it, 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 uh, do are we under a monsoon cloud right now probably not there so let's yeah. let's find a place in rajasthan or somewhere like that all right so something here is disturbing us let me try and put the and uh, professor you Yogesh Shauche, who are joining us for the uh, next bit of time. Where the edge of the disk of the moon is just touching the edge of the disk of the sun. And the contour of valleys and mountains that we have, now of course that moment has passed. When we go to the other, other edge, we may see again this contour of valleys and mountains. So this is where the annular eclipse is in progress now. And moon is moving across the disk of the sun. Until it meets, all right. Moon is moving across the disk of the sun until it meets the other edge, and this contour of valleys and mountains on the edge of the sun is okay. Here, the cast seems to be still continuing. This is called the lunar limb profile. Lunar limb profile, and from eclipse to eclipse, this lunar limb profile may be different. Maybe different, but why? We generally say that moon is showing us the same face all the time, right? However, because of a phenomenon called liberation, wherein moon is showing us the same face, but we keep over the sun here and there a little bit. So we see different cross section of mountains and valleys. So every eclipse, what is going to happen? Where are we going to see this Bailey's beads kind of a phenomenon? Where are we going to see mountains covering the sun before they should? The timings that we calculate for a nice spherical sun, how does that get changed? Uh, because of this contour of valleys and mountains. I showed the map. You can go there and check again for the maximum locations in India. We'll go there again in a little while. So uh, you make a calculation. OK, this is the moon. It's coming in front of the sun. It's going to cover it. Take this as a nice spherical ball and make that calculation. However. As you get information about the contour of the topography of the moon, you add that into this and make the calculation where. So let's wait now for the moment when the eclipse here is going to be um, uh, ending here. And I will try and take a look if there are other. I should probably just stop screen sharing for a while and try to get you a few other views from this. So here is another. I'll try to give this view. And let's take a look at where this particular webcast has reached. So this is from Abu Dhabi. So we have moved a little eastwards. So we will see. Now if we take a look at this. If we take a look at this, we are moved substantially eastwards, right? And so we can see that the eclipse, we had moved from Kenya to Abu Dhabi. And we can see that the eclipse is still in progress here. Now, when we get something like this, or go to this, these webcasts and try to capture these images. Just screen capture this particular image. If you do a screen capture of that image and print it later on, a sheet of graph sheet of this kind, a sheet of paper of this kind, print it and try to try to take a look at the fraction. See, we print it on a graph sheet of this kind. We print it on a sheet of graph paper of this kind. And this rib that you are seeing, this would come through and
we can count. I, I'll show uh, an image of this kind in a while. We can actually count the number of maybe a centimeter, millimeter squares, which are inside the sun and those which are inside the disk of the moon. We can actually make geometrical constructions. We can do image processing to try to find out what is the fractional diameter of the sun, which has been which is under eclipse. So these are the kind of projects which can be done by students. Even with your simple pinhole image, I would suggest, though you may feel discouraged thinking that, oh, it's such a small image, but even with such a pinhole image, try to take photographs of the sun in this pinhole image. And again, try to make some measurements of what is the fraction of eclipse. Of course, we have very low quality data coming from this, but it will be a benchmark. You're going to benchmark what is the quality of this uh, with respect to your making a uh, measurement. So just that benchmarking, because it hasn't been done for such very simple equipment, it would be something really worthwhile doing. I'd like to show you an image of that type of thing, not just now, in some time. So I'll leave you right now with this, because this is where the eclipse is progressed in Abu Dhabi. There seems to be some technical glitch in obtaining, let me just check, which we at least have Facebook Live from the planetarium to show us what's happening in the planetarium. Planetarium is giving us Facebook Live views of the eclipse. Yeah, there it is. So this is, of course, from a... Oh my God, full screen on this. Anyway, so we have this view from the planetarium and this is a live view. So this is what is happening at Delhi. And we have this happening in Abu Dhabi. We had a look at Kenya. Okay, the, the webcast here seems to have been stuck. But um, the eclipse will be passed now, the annularity here in Kenya. And okay, so some of the webcasts are not yet. Uh, let's just see maybe this refreshes. All right, so this view, now we have this view, which is live going on from Abu Dhabi and this view. The eclipse. So if you if you look at the, uh, in the corner, then you'll see the uh, view there. And the sun has started becoming slightly covered by the moon. The moon has started crawling over it and uh, it's starting to come in between the uh, earth and the sun. There you can see, I think it's, it's almost, uh, uh, 15 to 20 minutes into the uh, partial eclipse that we will see there and uh, it's, it's going to start looking like a pac-man <laughs> very soon and uh, so we can keep seeing this while we have uh, our other panelists give their opinions and experiences and uh, explanations about the eclipse so um, may i invite uh, uh, professor yogesh shauche uh, now uh, who is at the national center for science cell sciences he's himself uh, 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 biologist and microbiologist and very well uh, experienced and uh, knowledgeable about especially about viruses which are the talk of the town right now. Uh, Divya just uh, mentioned that uh, the coronavirus will not be affected and it, there's no relation in fact of, to any life on earth and the solar eclipse. So Professor Saoche, what, uh, what is your opinion and what would you like to share with us? Yeah. So thank you Samir, thanks for uh, this uh, organizing this and as uh, was said uh, just now that uh, the hypothesis that uh, solar eclipse will have uh, will destroy the coronavirus or something there is absolutely no logic or reason to that and there is, in fact there is no correlation between uh, eclipse and or sun and 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 the virus the only correlation a far fetched correlation is that uh, the name corona for this virus was uh, derived from the fact that uh, under the electron microscope the virus looks like solar corona that's all there is nothing more to it so the virus owes nothing to its origin for uh, 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 for any solar radiation or something something like that and it will be totally inappropriate and i would say rather foolish to think that the eclipse will uh, kill the virus. The eclipse is not going to kill the virus and uh, uh, there are other ways of killing the virus as we know that uh, use of uh, uh, use of uh, 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 your protection equipments and finally the if we are successful in getting some drug or the vaccine 
so these are the scientific ways of uh, killing the virus and uh, events like eclipse are not going to kill the virus so there is absolutely no biological basis to this theory oh that's good to know that little connection of corona and uh, name corona virus yeah that is the only connection between the virus uh, uh, corona virus and the solar corona we in fact had a had a big uh, solar astrophysics meet in uh, in uh, in february here at ayuka and it was impeded the many of our colleagues could not come because of the corona virus which was a minor thing at that time <laughs> we had uh, quite a few jokes going around but okay this is this is good to know thanks for explaining uh, this sir uh, there, there are people who are also asking if uh, you know uh, about this particular rumor that uh, uh, going around saying that uh, you know uh, not just corona virus but other microbes they come up and uh, infect our food and other li living uh, things around us during a solar eclipse in fact that uh, rumor comes up for any eclipse it may be solar or lunar so would you uh, would you be kind of to explain this uh, rumor again often there is a belief uh, that uh, you should not uh, eat anything that is cooked during the eclipse or uh the food goes bad uh, uh when it is stored during the eclipse uh, and again i would emphatically say that there is no scientific basis to that uh, uh, there were some experiments conducted earlier by citizens science center in pune and those studies show that uh, whether it is food or whether it is air at least microbiologically the microbial load in the air or in the food remains unaffected during the eclipse or even after the eclipse so i can very confidently say that at least microbiologically the food does not go bad uh, whether it is prepared during the eclipse or whether uh, it is stored during the eclipse and also the quality of the air microbiologically does not change during the eclipse the number of bacteria present in the given volume of the air they it remains the same and it is also not the not that uh, any harmful bacteria number increases in the air uh, during the eclipse that is not true so at least from the microbiological point of view i can definitely say that air is no more toxic than what it is normally during the eclipse and food of course food remains microbiologically food remains unaffected whether it is made during the eclipse or stored during the eclipse thank you professor shauke uh, so physical point of view i can definitely say that air is no more toxic than what it is normally during the eclipse and food of course food remains microbiologically food remains unaffected i I mean, it is not during the eclipse to, uh, or stored during the eclipse there youtube videos if they are watching our uh, feed live so physical point of view i can definitely say that air is <laughs> no more toxic than what it is normally during because we are trying out this uh, food of course kind of, uh, food remains microbiologically technology food remains unaffected cost of whether it is so many during the eclipse uh, or stored during the eclipse. there are youtube videos if they are watching uh, our uh, feed live we also welcome so priya hasan i can definitely say that air is we are uh, no uh, toxic than uh, what it is normally during because we are trying out this for uh, the uh, remains microbiologically technology food 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 cost of everything so during the eclipse uh, or stored during the eclipse. there are youtube videos if they are watching uh, our Uh, like we also welcome priya hasan i think yeah so i think uh, there was a technical glitch uh, we are sorry about that uh, uh, we are trying to uh, correct it um, uh, we So I, I had a question uh, for uh, Professor Shauche actually, if he can hear us, uh, Professor Shauche. Uh, so many people also observe that animals uh, or birds uh, they have a distinct change in behavior. A distinct change in behavior. Where uh, 
during the during uh, but total solar eclipse so that is more about uh, the uh, light uh, be being uh, becoming very very low and which confuses is uh, animals so can you tell something more about this yeah it is true that people have made these observations that uh, uh, during the eclipse animals as well as as well as plants uh, uh, they behave as if uh, they would behave during the evening or in the night but uh, uh, that has to do with the uh, light intensity getting reduced and it's a kind of uh, feeling that uh, it's 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 a night time and that is the reason uh, both animal and plants they behave as if it's a night and uh, i do not know if there are detailed studies available uh, on this but uh, i would rather attribute that to uh, level of certain uh, chemical in the plant or animals getting changed which uh, uh, respond to the intensity of light the level of those key chemicals getting altered because of the sunlight getting reduced and then thus affecting their behavior so it's 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 because of that rather than again attributing uh, to any uh, harmful effect or something like that yeah i guess i just wanted to add here like um, as divya said right there is a big shadow of the earth itself which falls every night right uh, on the side of the earth where it is night time and we routinely cook food during the night we routinely keep things overnight and eat them um, at times uh, later on as leftovers right and most of the time people are fine right so uh, i think there is nothing to be worried about uh, in terms of an eclipse and there being some kind of a shadow which is falling and then creating uh, some issues in the atmosphere or disturbing your food aniket for some reason your uh, voice is not coming through uh, i we do have uh, i mean we appreciate these comments and uh, we have around 4000 people watching right now uh, 2000 on our channel and 2000 on another channel which is streaming our <laughs> content out so i i i uh, i uh, really want these uh, viewers to uh, watch it safely and not uh, fall prey to any superstitions and misconceptions especially those which make use of something called pseudo science which basically uh, starts to put in some scientific uh, you know terms etc into a unreasonable uh, explanation and therefore uh, you know people might sometimes mistake it for a real scientific explanation we have scientists here saying that there is no harm in an eclipse it does not cause any kind of increase in uh, microbes etc it's it's actually a very tiny night which suddenly happens in the daytime maybe we can uh, understand why the birds might be confused if there is a total solar eclipse happening at your place but uh, for a little while but then uh, they don't really they really get back to life very soon after that so uh, that's that's uh, amazing uh, to uh, see uh, and experience though and uh, i hope that you will experience this uh, happening right now uh, if you are in the north of india uh, if you want to watch it there are very uh, simple ways of doing it of course if you have saved any solar eclipse goggles for yourself go use them uh, clean them up properly and use them make sure there are no holes in them and uh, otherwise uh, as uh, we've been pointing out you can make use of some small mirrors if you have smaller the smaller the better if you have like mirrors which are used on tiny dresses uh, tiny mirrors used on dresses for decoration those are the best but of course uh, if you have a hand mirror like surud has here uh, you could use it to point the light of the sun not onto yourself or <laughs> but onto a wall which is far off you can also maybe if you have a big mirror you can just make a make a aperture like uh, like surud has made here uh, he has made a cut in a small uh, cut in a piece of black paper yeah, put it on top of the mirror then you can just reflect light off that uh, mirror and uh, onto a wall a uh, whitish wall would be good enough and lo you will have the image of the eclipse right there now, of course the best way the safest way is to watch our webcast we'll be showing uh, you <laughs> live pictures from all over the annularity belt 
and also from other places uh, down south and slightly north of the belt because uh, we are, have several people arranging for webcasts uh, there. So uh, me, uh, stay tuned to our uh, channel. We'll be there for the next one more hour almost. So uh, I now actually uh, would like to uh, invite Professor Pia Hassan to also say her uh, experience and uh, her um, explanation. Priya, please. So, so. Yeah. yeah, Priya, you can go ahead. You can speak uh, if you want. Right? Yeah, so Samir, maybe um, uh, maybe she's uh, having trouble in getting us uh, and she's not uh, getting the feed through Zoom, uh, but instead through YouTube. So there is a delay in between. Right, right. And no, we'll, we'll just, uh, 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 then I, in that time, meanwhile, I'll admit uh, Professor Dibendu Nandi, another solar physicist. Uh, he's from Kolkata, so he's from the east of India. Uh, let, let us... Uh, and I will drop off. Um, uh, audio problem. Samir. Can you hear me now? Join later. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, Priya. Hello. And, uh, uh, welcome. Can Jimena. you hear me now? And goodbye to uh, Surut, who will come back later uh, while we are experiencing the max in Pune. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. 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 Okay. So. Uh, Hello, Dibendu. How, how are things there in Kolkata? Can you, uh, do you have your solar eclipse goggles to see the eclipse? Yeah. You're muted, uh, Dibendu. So, uh, somebody, can you hear me now? I can hear you, Anikit. Yes. I was muted. Can you hear me now? Yes. Dibendu, please. Tell us how, how things are there. Good morning to uh, all of you. I see that you are having a lot of fun uh, out there. So Calcutta is kind of, you know, there's a play of clouds going on. I do have my Eclipse goggles, but, uh, you know, uh, I think I'm going to watch it online because from the live feed from North India, you're going to see, you know, I, I think almost 98% of the, the coverage, which is going to be the Hi. best. Yeah, so I, in fact, I have sent a link to everybody here in our institute and yeah. uh, families. So I hope that everybody is watching uh, this fantastic initiative that you folks have uh, taken up from Ayuka and the Astronomical Society of India. Uh, so I'll be here for like the next 10, 15 minutes and I'll return again at 12 because in between I have to go off to uh, a Bengali channel. Uh, you know, covering in the regional languages is also important, uh, as you know. Um, so yeah, so I, I mean, the last eclipse, uh, I don't know, Samir, if you remember, we were all together in Kerala, right? It was a... Yes, <laughs> and a total washout. Do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We, we, we were uh, like almost up all night uh, waiting in excitement for the dawn to come and show us the ring. But uh, then the clouds also came along and we missed it. And we are missing it this time as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so I think in Calcutta, it's also kind of a, I, I don't know what's going to happen because there's a mix of clouds um, uh, and sunlight. Also, there's a play of clouds. So, um, it's a matter of luck whether you know I mean, whether I think we'll catch some amount of it, but it's certainly not going to be as spectacular as you know as what's happening in in North India, right? So um, yes, yes. So uh, on, on YouTube, you can see uh, the eclipse has already started, and we are seeing the feeds. Yeah, yeah Samir, uh, we would like to point out one one thing. Initially, the uh, moon was ingressing from uh, the left side of the field. Now it is ingressing from the right side. It is just a flip due to a te technical setting in the in the feed. It is not that moon has not jumped to the other side. So viewers should note that. <laughs> Thanks for pointing that out. Yes, yeah, that did happen uh, because we had to uh, change the orientation of the feed for some reason. Uh, Thanks. So uh, we, I, I just uh, uh, admit uh, another uh, panelist joining us from Punjab, uh, Professor Harvinda Jassal from Aisar Mohali. She is also trying to do a webcast, but I'll just keep her in and I'll uh, relay on to Priya, who uh, has been waiting uh, to speak. Thanks. Welcome, Harvinder. Uh, and uh, 
Priya, please continue. You're muted and uh, we are eager to listen to you. Yeah. Priya. Okay. So hi everyone. So yeah, it's an exciting moment, especially uh, you know something exciting for outreach activities. And I think the eclipse gives us a very unique uh, you know a time to do this thing, as well as a very important role in debunking myths, right? Because there are so many myths associated to eclipse, and by the time the eclipse is over, it all gets proved to be wrong, right? So you you don't have to wait too long to prove it to be uh, you know prove the myths to be wrong. Uh, so we'd all be seeing that, and also in terms of an outreach event, it's a very important outreach event. It gets people to look up at the sky and observe these things. Uh, but with the present situation, it has all become so very different because you know we can't be collecting people, so we are stuck onto our digital screens watching these things. Uh, but I think it is a very unique, good moment for us to actually uh, see the event. And uh, in Hyderabad, the scene is not too good because the monsoons have come in. And uh, the sky is overcast, so I've not even gone to check it in detail. But I think it's it's it's, it's definitely bad. So because of the monsoons. But I'm sure um, Harvinder will have something more interesting to share. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Priya. Uh, uh, Professor Divi Oberoi, हम आपके पास वापस आते हैं. हमने पिछले कुछ मिनटों में ग्रहण के बारे में अंतर्शद्धा अलग-अलग हैं जो है. इसके बारे में कुछ बातें की अंग्रेजी में. आप हमारे हिंदी दर्शकों के लिए इसका थोड़ा हिंदी में समरी दे सकते हैं जरूर धन्यवाद अनिकेत तो जैसा आजकल हम सबने सोशल मीडिया में बहुत बार देखा है कि बहुत लोगों के मन में बहुत उम्मीद है कि इस एक्लिप्स की वजह से जो ये कोरोना वायरस का पैंडेमिक है इस पर प्रभाव पड़ेगा और ये खत्म हो जाएगा उससे तो आ, सच में ऐसा कुछ नहीं है एक्लिप्स का इस कोरोना वायरस पर जरा भी प्रभाव नहीं पड़ने वाला है राइट एक वो जानने के लिए वो समझने के लिए आपको सिर्फ इतना जानने की जरूरत है कि एक्लिप्स होता क्या है एक्लिप्स सिर्फ लाइट की ब्लॉकेज है राइट सूर्य से रोशनी आ रही है पृथ्वी और सूर्य के बीच में चंद्रमा है जो सूर्य से आने वाली रोशनी को रोक लेता है कम कर देता है राइट right? पूरी तरह रोक लेता है तो टोटल सोलर इक्लिप्स हो जाता है पूरी नहीं रोक पाता तो पार्शियल सोलर इक्लिप्स या एनुलर सोलर इक्लिप्स है अब वायरस को मारने के लिए हमें कम नहीं ज्यादा रोशनी की जरूरत है राइट right? तो अगर रोशनी हम कम कर देंगे तो वायरस का तो उससे कोई नुकसान नहीं होने वाला दूसरा ध्यान में रखें कि एक्लिप्स तो दुनिया के एक थोड़े से हिस्से में ही हो रहा है क्योंकि हमारे जो जो चंद्रमा है जिसकी शैडो की वजह से जिसकी परछाई की वजह से ये हो रहा है वो इतनी छोटी है कि वो पूरी पृथ्वी को एक बार में कवर नहीं कर पाती है उसके बहुत थोड़े से हिस्से को कवर कर पाती है ये भी याद रखें कि रोज रात को आधी पृथ्वी पे पृथ्वी की अपनी परछाई पड़ रही है जो कि कई घंटे रहती है ये इक्लिप्स तो कुछ चंद मिनटों का या कुछ दसियों मिनटों का है लेकिन जो पृथ्वी जो हमारी रात है वो तो कई घंटों की है तो अगर सिर्फ इस लाइट को रोकने से अगर इस वायरस ने मरना होता तो बहुत समय पहले मर गया होता आपने ये भी देखा होगा मीडिया में कि बहुत सी कंपनीज ने भारत सरकार की भी कई कंपनीज ने ऐसे उपकरण बनाए हैं जो कि वायरस को मारने के लिए यूवी लाइट का प्रयोग करते हैं राइट ये यूवी लाइट जो है सूर्य से आती है लेकिन वो अधिकतर यूवी लाइट हमारा जो एटमोस्फियर है जो उसकी गैसेज है उसमें एब्जॉर्ब हो जाती है बहुत ही थोड़ी सी वो नीचे तक पहुंच पाती है तो सूर्य से जो रोशनी इस वायरस को मार सकती थी वो वैसे भी नीचे तक पहुंच नहीं पाती है तो दुर्भाग्यवश कह लीजिए चाहे लेकिन इस ग्रहण का कोरोना वायरस पैंडेमिक पर इस पूरे जो महामारी फैली हुई है इस पर कोई प्रभाव नहीं पड़ेगा जैसी सावधानियां हम पहले बरत रहे हैं वैसी ही सावधानियां हमें आगे भी बरतनी पड़ेंगी जितना कम हो सके उतना कम बाहर जाएं, बाहर जाएं तो लोगों से थोड़े दूरी बनाकर रखें मास्क का उपयोग करें बिना किसी कारण के इधर उधर चीजों को हाथ ना लगाए चीजों को हाथ लगाकर अपने चेहरे को हाथ ना लगाए हाथों को बार बार धोएं वो सब चीजें जो आपको पहले भी कई बार याद दिलाई जा चुकी है उन सब चीजों का ध्यान रखें और इस ग्रहण का कोरोना महामारी पर कोई प्रभाव नहीं पड़ने वाला है थैंक थैंक यू प्रोफेसर ओबेर प्रोफेसर हरविंदर जस्सल हम हमसे जुड़ी हुई है चंडीगढ़ चंडीगढ़ से मोहाली से सो so, हरविंदर जी वहां पे क्या सिचुएशन है आप ये ग्रहण देख पा रही हैं? जी सुबह तो हम जब उठे थे तो बहुत बादल थे और हम घबरा रहे थे कि नहीं देख पाएंगे और जस्ट से दस पंद्रह हुए वैसे ही बादल छट गया और इस वक्त काफी सनी है और हम देख पा रहे हैं 
हमारे एक कॉलीग मानवेंद्र बेरा बॉल मिरर से प्रोजेक्ट कर रहे हैं और सोशली डिस्टेंस वे में एक एक करके बच्चे वहां देख भी रहे हैं उन्होंने सन फिल्टर्स भी बांटे थे और हमारे अपने ग्रुप में तो लोग शेयर कर रहे हैं तो मैं कुछ धीरे धीरे फोटोज शेयर करती रहूंगी यहाँ पे Uh, मेरे uh, दो कोलीग्स भी ज्वाइन करेंगे एक बायोलॉजिस्ट हैं जो कि बर्ड्स के बिहेवियर पे बात करती हैं उनका स्टडी करती हैं शीज एन बिहेवियर इकोलॉजिस्ट एंड एक हैं हिस्टोरियन रित ज्योति बंदोपाध्याय जो कि अर्बन हिस्ट्री और इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टडीज पे काम करते हैं वो जैसे ही आएंगे हम उनसे बात करेंगे बट इस वक्त बिल्कुल सनी है बाहर एकदम रोशनी है और हम लोग देख पा रहे हैं so since harvinder mentioned about projecting using ball mirror uh, we also got, got image from one of our viewers from mumbai uh, who has sent us image of using uh, of projection using a uh, kitchen equipment people can see i will just share screen for a minute uh, you can see this image we, oh. everybody can recognize this no colander chalni hai the aur isse ये अभी हमें मुंबई से दर्शक ने भेजी है इमेज सो so आप भी आपके घर पे ऐसे कर सकते हैं बहुत ही सुंदर और अच्छी आइडिया है सब लोग ऐसे करके अपना अच्छे से सूर्य ग्रहण का दर्शन ले सकते हैं और एक नहीं तो मल्टीपल इमेजेस मिल रही है हमें और पेड़ की छाया में भी देख सकते हैं नीचे देख हाँ ये ये और एक अच्छी आइडिया है अगर आप घर के बाहर हैं आसपास पेड़ हैं तो आप कोशिश कीजिए कि उसके नीचे जो छाया गिर रही है वो देखिए उसमें भी आपको काफी छोटी छोटी इक्लिप्सेस दिखाई देगी और आपको ऊपर देखने की जरूरत नहीं पड़ेगी शायद ये इक्लिप्स की इमेजेस एक्चुअली ऊपर जो सूरज दिखाई देगा उसके साइज से बड़ी होंगी तो इट पे भी मोर यू नो सेटिस्फैक्ट्री टू यू देन लुकिंग एट द सन डायरेक्टली इतने के डाइज आप हिस्ट्री पे काम करते हैं यू आप अलग अलग भाषा यूज करके इंग्लिश हिंदी और बंगाली जो आपकी मदर टंग है आप बता सकते हैं आपका क्या परसेप्शन है और आप इसको एज अर्सन रित ज्योति ज्योति हम आपको सुन सकते हैं कुड यू प्लीज स्पीक कैन यू कैन यू हियर मी ना यस यस रित ज्योति वी कैन हियर यू एंड रित ज्योति वर्क ऑन अर्बन हिस्ट्री इनफॉर्मल हिस्ट्री इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर हिस्ट्री एंड इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर स्टडीज सो वो आई सर मोहाली में ही प्रोफेसर हैं हमारे मेरे कॉलीग हैं तो आई वुड लाइक हिज व्यूज टू बी नोन टू people who are locked in here over here rita jyoti could you please speak a few words about your perception yeah so language use english hindi uh, mix yeah english is fine what? please yeah, go ahead english hindi bengali as you uh, okay okay so uh, it's not very india specific so if you look at the myths um, about uh, eclipses uh all ancient cultures have uh, their own share of myths and not all myths uh, carry uh, a bad omen uh, for uh, people uh, during eclipse so maoris for example they think that if there is a total eclipse then they will win the war next war uh, that would follow uh, the eclipse so uh, uh, different cultures have their different perceptions and the very interesting thing about uh, eclipse uh, when we look at uh, different myths is that they also reveal uh, certain cultural perceptions certain cultural aspirations of different societies living in different times so myths are also archives of changing sensibilities uh, therefore uh, when a historian approaches uh, uh, Um, a, a cultural phenomenon uh, then they do not just brush aside it as of course it is unscientific we all know there is nothing called rahu eating uh, sun and then some sun coming out uh, of his um, uh, neck uh, but the thing is uh, they also uh, uh, reveal the ways in which different cultures uh, tried to reason uh tried to engage with uh natural phenomena so that's why i i think uh, 
uh, it's also important that people get to know about those myths uh, and within the subcontinent indian subcontinent you have uh, uh, dozens of myths around uh, uh, eclipse so it's not that the, uh, we all know the rahu thing rahu brush uh, but the thing is there are many cultures um, many tribes in india in central india for example um, uh, there is a very strong myth that you know date collectors come and uh, and collect date from some for example and uh, date is incurred because there is seen in the art so if the upper part of uh, sun's body is visible then lower part is uh, locked up then uh, it is said that animals are in danger if the upper part is covered then humans are safe so uh, for example uh, there are a lot of uh, circulating myths not just one uh, it's a very diverse uh, way of engaging with the world when you don't have science when you don't have access to uh, uh, scientific knowledge and explanatory structures for instance so i stop here maybe yeah thanks ruth jyoti and what do you think uh, how should one approach like uh, to uh, myth, dispel some of these myths because some of them actually uh, come in the way of explaining science to people yeah so uh, people also i i heard uh, people using uh, scientific jargons um, uh, to explain uh, eclipse saying that you know there is a very different um, a very uh, unhealthy ray that comes uh, during eclipse so uh, i would say that a lot of sensitization uh, programs need to be undertaken and also i think that you know popular science movements uh, that uh, were quite important in india uh, in various parts that have eclipsed themselves uh, in the last say uh, last 6 uh, 7 years uh, i would say that it's very important that we uh, look at popular the, uh, very rich traditions of uh, popular science local popular science movements local clubs going to people uh, engaging with people more engagement with people more engagement with myths more engagement with superstition is what is needed uh, i would say that for that science need to be popularized and that's what is needed uh, so scientific temper is not something that scientists only possess right so in society also there is scientific temper and that needs to be nurtured and that nurture i don't see within the structure of indian state as well now this so i i would say that indian state also has to play a role in it uh, sorry to interrupt for a minute uh, we viewers can also see an another projection method which uh, is there in the right side feed from vigyan prasar in kurukshetra they have projected it on a say a plain paper using a pinhole uh people can see that feed as well uh, thank you ritu jyoti this this was a little eye opener for uh, how the scientific temperament needs to be uh, you know enhanced in the cur current scenario and uh, we have had superstitions all the time and in fact people are asking on youtube why are there so many superstitions around the eclipses well it's i think uh, uh you know inertia for people to uh, let go of uh, things that were old knowledge and accept new knowledge because it may be put forward in a very complex way to them so yes uh, we are trying uh, our best and i hope our event also leads to some uh, myths being dispelled some of the younger generation at least getting uh, you know uh, convinced that uh, what science is telling them is not just an alternative theory to what old people or or people of ancient times told these, these both go along and they uh, are probably just better explanations coming from modern science so we do that and of course while doing that we enjoy the eclipse i can see a lot of uh, feeds uh, uh, on the on the youtube channel and uh, you can also see some projection methods being used because 
technical defects <laughs> cause our uh, equipments to fail sometimes. So that's that's a characteristic of science. Experiments fail, equipment fail, but then we we add that up and uh, the experience leads to something better. So uh, we are we are watching the feeds. Uh, there are also people sending us uh, images uh, taken through their mobile phones. So uh, I, I would remind you, mobile phones are uh, just like your eyes. So we have constantly been saying that lo don't look at the sun with just your eyes. Directly looking at the sun is harmful, even if it's 99% covered. Uh, suppose you're in the annularity ring uh, belt today. So don't look at it. Uh, have a um, solar eclipse a goggle ready. That it in itself cuts down the uh, light to 99%, and still then you can see the sun. So can you imagine how much light it must be giving, right? And so if you're using a mobile to uh, image the sun, then also you should take care of the sensor of the mobile. So uh, uh, give it a little bit of uh, thought and use a solar filter in front of it instead of your eye. Uh, if you're taking a picture of the sun, don't look at it directly. Uh, you put the filter first to any optical thing that you have. You put the filter first and then the lens, and then you can click it. And uh, we are getting very good uh, pictures uh, using this method. And I, I encourage you all to do that as well. But of course, uh, be safe, look around, uh, you know, look around where, whether it's safe, unsafe, whether there's a big group, uh, you know, not following social distancing, etc. Don't be part of that. But do watch the eclipse. Uh, we also have Manjari Jain who's been invited uh, here um, and Harvinder, uh, could you uh, introduce and uh, conduct the other discussion? Uh, you're on mute, uh, Harvinder. Sorry, thanks a lot. Uh, Manjari Jain uh, is a colleague here with me in Aisar Mohali, and she is a biologist. She works on behavior ecology and evolutionary biology. Her specialization is bird behavior, and she works, uh, she works on bird calls, their acoustics. And uh, it would be nice if you can speak a few words, Manjari, about how birds' behaviors change, bird behaviors changes, change when eclipse is on. And it would be nice to hear a biologist's perspective for that. Yeah, hi. It's uh, really wonderful to be on this panel and I'm also learning so much. So thank you, Harvinda, so much for including. Um, so, um, uh, of course, we know because of the eclipse, there is attenuation in the light and uh, which is uh, one of the major environmental factor that animals use to uh, modulate their behavior. And uh, many animals actually have been studied during these uh, uh, wonderful uh, opportunities that eclipses provide us to see how this uh, modulates their behavior. And in 2017, there was this uh, study uh, by Cornell University, a bunch of colleagues from Cornell University, where they show that during the total solar eclipse, which was uh, seen in some parts uh, in the uh, US, uh, they found that the birds were uh, reducing their activity and uh, some some uh, species behave in a certain way in which they start to behave like it would they would behave during a storm or during uh, sunset so they, they reduce their flight uh, and they used uh, so base, uh, due to the reduced light uh, availability it is hard to observe wildlife so instead what they did was to use data from the radars to see how uh, uh, migration patterns and flying activity of birds, etc., is reduced during the uh, total solar eclipse. And um, they also find that there are some birds that uh, show some sort of a behavior which, in which it, it's almost as if they are confused. So they actually increase their flight just uh, before uh, the total so solar eclipse, and then they come back to their perch. So all kinds of interesting things uh, birds uh, sort of show. We are on campus, on Aysar Mohali campus, we are doing some observations right now. We are measuring uh, activity levels of uh, this group of uh, birds. We call them uh, jungle babbler or saat bhai. And uh, they are cooperative breeders. So we are seeing how their parental care or nesting behavior, these things, how they change due to the uh, eclipse. So do they come back to their roost? Do they start... Uh, behaving as if it is night time. Is it night time activity or is it something different? So that is what currently right now students are out in the field. They are uh, doing all of this. But there was one one thing that I wanted to talk about animal behavior very quickly uh, about uh, these animals, which we cannot see uh, uh, with uh, just naked eyes. And we uh, need to observe them using microscope. These are called planktons. So these are zooplanktons, which are animals that are uh, found in uh, 
uh, water bodies and there are of course phytoplankton which are sort of plants if you like um, so uh, a lot of study has gone in to show how uh, the plankton behave differently during the eclipse and uh, with respect to phytoplankton to see how the light uh, and the change in this light levels affects their primary productivity or how much uh, food if you like is being produced by these uh, plant like things and for the zooplankton which are like animals if you like uh, to see their migration patterns so if you think of the surface of water there are different kinds of communities at different uh, levels uh, depth of the water and uh, during the night time what happens is uh, many zooplankton especially copepods and rotifers uh, it is seen that they actually do a surface migration so they come up to the surface during night time and in the day time they go down so people have seen and this is one group from uh, india itself uh, 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 led by professor uh, shubhro kumar mukhopadhyay uh, and they published their findings in uh, the journal called limnology where they show this uh, change in the migration pattern during the pe brief period of this total eclipse so within the few minutes you can see that this migration pattern is completely altered so where they see surface crowding for some species some others go down and it's absolutely incredible so the few minutes of the eclipse allow us a peep hole if you like into uh, this amazing world of how animals respond to light and that i think is very interesting it is interesting Once we know something about the babblers i will let her when they know uh, and she will probably tell you professor jain i have a question yeah uh, so you said your students are right now outside in the field uh, observing sadbhais uh i think uh, means maintaining uh, social my, distance yeah i this is my guess but today eclipse is happening in the morning hours and uh, so birds also have their daily rhythms so yeah. uh, eclipse in the morning hours and change of light during morning hours would may have a different effect as compared to some eclipse which going, which is going to happen closer to sunset sure what, what you you feel about that yeah so one would expect that uh, also the period of darkness or uh, near darkness uh, one would expect that would matter so given that this is at noon time where their activity is fairly high we do expect to see some interesting patterns there we do so my hypothesis and my student does not agree with me which is fine that i i expect them to start behaving as if it is sunset and they uh, return back to the roost and the parents to return back to the nest so these are cooperative breeders which means that all group members participate in parental care of the chicks so all kinds of all the uh, individuals in the group should be going to the nest at all times but during night time i expect that it should be the parents who have the maximum investment in the chicks they should be around the nest so i expect to see that uh, certain individuals they come back to the nest at this time i don't know we'll see the more important thing is they are out and they don't uh, come back just to hide from superstitions <laughs> <They, laughs> yes of course yeah. right maybe maybe at uh, maybe thousands of years ago that may have been the case with humans because they would then fear any kind of darkness and uh, it could which have is, this yeah which is okay i mean we didn't know probably people didn't know enough and uh, yeah yes yeah so that's what we try to point out that uh, it's it's all the all the uh, things we call superstitions they are there in the society because there have been some reasons of fear of the unknown and it has continued so at, at that time maybe it would have been safer to be inside when it's dark and uh, now when it's not then it's not relevant and then we can probably keep calling it superstition uh, samir i would like to uh, take up couple of uh, questions from the audience yes. so uh, and i would like to bring uh, professor priya hasan here uh, so the people are asking uh, which household items can be used to view eclipse safely so you can talk about that and then there is somebody who also mentioned that he or she is using x ray film to view eclipse so you can talk about uh, that as well uh, priya you are on mute yeah so thanks aniket yeah so i think uh, one of the, the the recent picture which was shared of the sea right the sphere showing the eclipse i think that really looks very beautiful because each individual hole acts like a fin hole and you get the the image which looks really very nice so uh, actually it's anything which has a small aperture the ideal one being a sieve and i think the sieve image really comes out very nice uh but um, like we mentioned earlier also x-ray films and all obviously are not the right thing to be used 
because uh, you know it's a misconception people think that if they use x-ray films that will be safe enough it's definitely not safe enough and you should not be using x-ray films it's it's best to have uh, you know uh, from a from a good place if you have uh, eclipse uh, filters or solar filters or glasses but this time because of the covid you know issue we could not um, distribute them or people did not uh, feel comfortable buying it from places because uh, of the contact problem uh, but but yeah i would say the ideal most ideal kitchen appliance would be the sieve the sieve really gives you a good image yeah okay this is also uh, a time for a short summary in regional languages so priya can you uh, get, do a summary of what we can expect in next one hour or something like that uh, in <laughs> cuz there are several uh, people from the north watching and uh, yeah i'm going to harvinder next for punjabi yeah sure okay so you want me to speak in hindi in gujarati oh in gujarati oh, <laughs> yeah okay. gujarat rajasthan yeah. punjab haryana all watching <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, actually um, chalo gujarati ma baat karu chu to amra apre uh, eclipse joye che grahan joye che je shuru thai gayo almost 10 vage sawar thi ane uh, tame loko um, सोशल डिस्टन्सिंग मेटेन कर प्रोजेक्शन ते एक्लिप्स ने सरस रीते सको सीम्पलेस्ट प्रोजेक्शन है कि छन्नी वापरी ने ते प्रोजेक्शन कोई वॉल थी जो एंड ए बहुत बहुत सरस लगे जो तब प्रोजेक्शन जो पब्विस्ली आँखों की जो ऑब्विस्ली मना है तक नहीं जो जो आँखों की कारण के इट इज हार्मफुल है आँखों तो ट्राय भी नहीं करव जो एक्सरे फिल्म्स नहीं यूज करव जो बेस्ट है प्रोजेक्शन जेम पहला भी बात थी थी कि सैलफोन थी लोग विचारे कि सैलफोन थी जी सके सैलफोन थी भी तब आँखों यूज करना सेंसर्स जो तरा फोन पर है राइट तो एनी तमने फिल्टर की जरूर पड़ से तो टेलिस्कोप के कैमरा के फोन जो तब यूज करो एनी तमने फिल्टर सोलर फिल्टर यूज करवा जरूरी है तो याद तो तब फिल्टर यूज करो जो तरी पास फिल्टर ना हो तो प्रोजेक्शन थी जो एंड डिपेन्डिंग ऑन तब क्यार हो छो वन ओ क्लॉक वे तरू मेक्सिम आश आई होप तब अमरु ए सी एप जो है स्मार्टफोन मे एप है एन्युअल सोलर एक्लिप्स तब प्ले स्टोर थी शोधी सको एने डाउनलॉड कर सको और स्पेसिफिक लोकेशन एक्जेक्ट टाइमिंग्स जो सको एंड तो एट प्रेजेंट अगर तरी पास फिल्टर्स नहीं तो बेस्ट है कि तब प्रोजेक्शन प्रोजेक्शन कर जो लो एंड आई होप तक बहुत मजा आए ये जो थैंक यू थैंक यू माई गुजराती इज नॉट सो ग्रेट हरविंदर कैन कैन यू गिव अ ब्रीफ मेसेज फॉर अवर व्यूअर्स फ्रॉम पंजाब Yes, and I was reading the YouTube feed. There was someone asking for Punjabi, so very nice. Uh, then I will talk about the grand part. Grand, which is just one part of the day, is for us. Because the grand part is for the sun and the moon. It 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 is for the sun and the moon. पेड़ के परछावे च कोई फर्क नहीं है तो ये कई तरीके द अलग अलग तरीके के सुपरसिशन मिथ या भ्रांतियां जुड़िया हुई ने जो कि हूँ साड़ी जानकारी वादू होने करके जहाँ का हूँ कोई महत्व नहीं रह गया है जिमें तुम खा नहीं सकते इदा कुछ नहीं है तुम जिमें नॉर्मल खा सकते हो पीते हो उ खा सकते हो पी सकते हो परछावे जिम्मे पेड़ के थले बैठ के खा सकते हो उ हजे भी तुम जो खाना चाहो खा सकते हो कोई मतलब नहीं है का। नाले एक चीज है कि सूरज कदे भी चाहे ग्रहण हो ना हो सीधे अखा नहीं देखना होंगे ओर थोड़ी अखा दे अखा जो रेटिना है परदा है जल सकता है तो तुम जो भी सूरज न अगर देखना हो तो फिल्टर न ही देखना होंगे और फिल्टर भी ए नहीं कि कोई एक्सरे की फिल्म ले ली या कोई एक्सपोज फिल्म ले ली वो एक स्पेसल सोलर फिल्टर होंगे जो कि लैना पैदा है ठीक है मोबाइल फोन भी कहते हो फोटो ले लीए पर मोबाइल फोन भी थोड़ी अखा वगर ही है ओदा भी सेंसर सड़ सकता है सूरज की रोशनी ना ओद वास्ते भी थोड़ा फिल्टर न इस्तेमाल करने की जरूरत हैगी है तो तरीका सब तो अच्छा यही है कि तुम सूरज न प्रोजेक्ट करो जिम्मे एक शीशा लैके ओनू दूर दीवार से ओद परछावा लै लो 
ਛਾਵਾਂ ਲੈ ਲਓ ਔਰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸੂਰਜ ਦੀ ਇਮੇਜ ਨੂੰ ਉੱਥੇ ਦੀਵਾਰ ਤੇ ਦੇਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਨਾਲ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਇਸ ਫੀਚਰ ਦੇਖਿਆ ਗਿਆ ਕਿ ਕੋਈ ਛਾਨਨੀ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਛਾਨਨੀ ਦੇ ਥਰੂ ਤਾਂ ਛਾਨਨੀ ਦੇ ਥਰੂ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਰੋਸ਼ਨੀ ਥੱਲੇ ਫਰਸ਼ ਤੇ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਦੇਖ ਸਕਦੇ ਹੋ ਤਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪੂਰਾ ਸੂਰਜ ਦਾ ਗ੍ਰੈਂਡ ਆਰਾਮ ਨਾਲ ਦਿਖੇਗਾ ਤੇ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਦੇਖੋ ਇਹ ਇੱਕ ਕੁਦਰਤ ਦਾ ਬਹੁਤ ਸੋਹਣਾ ਨਜ਼ਾਰਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਦੇਖਣ ਚ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਚ ਸੇਫਲੀ ਦੇਖਣ ਚ ਕੋਈ ਦਿੱਕਤ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਰੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਸੋਹਣਾ ਨਜ਼ਾਰਾ ਹੈ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਬਹੁਤ ਘੱਟ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਇੰਨਾ ਘੱਟ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਦੇਖਣਾ ਵੀ ਪੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਧੰਨਵਾਦ ਆਸ਼ਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਭ ਕੋ ਆਪਣੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਭਾਸ਼ਾਵਾਂ ਮੇ ਇਹ ਜੋ ਐਕਸਪਲੇਨੇਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਪਸੰਦ ਆ ਰਹੇ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਔਰ ਹਮ ਵੀ ਕੋਸ਼ਿਸ਼ ਕਰेंगे ਕਿ ਥਰੂ ਆਊਟ ਹਮ ਇਹ ਕਰਤੇ ਰਹੇ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਐਕਸਪਰਟਸ ਅਲੱਗ ਅਲੱਗ ਭਾਸ਼ਾਵਾਂ ਮੇ ਆਪਕੋ ਸਮਝਾएंगे ਔਰ ਸ਼ਾਰਟ ਮੇ ਆਪਕੋ ਬਤਾएंगे ਕਿ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਕਰ ਸਕਤੇ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਸਕਤੇ ਅਭੀ ਆਪ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਐਕਲਿਪਸ ਧੀਰੇ-ਧੀਰੇ ਬੜਤਾ ਜਾ ਰਹਾ ਹੈ ਔਰ ਆਪਕੋ ਜੋ ਗ੍ਰਹਿਣ ਹੈ ਉਸਕਾ ਫੇਸ ਜੋ ਹਮ ਕਹਤੇ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਬੜਤਾ ਹੋਆ ਦਿਖਾਈ ਦੇਗਾ ਹਮਾਰੇ ਫੀਲਡਸ ਮੇ तो आप देख सकते हैं इसमें एक और आप आपको चीज बताना चाहूंगा कि हमारी हमारा भारत का जो भाग इस शैडो के अंदर आने वाला है उसमें काफी लॉन्गिट्यूड्स है तो जो जो वर्टिकल लाइंस होती है कोऑर्डिनेट सिस्टम की अर्थ की तो उनको कहते हैं लॉन्गिट्यूड्स तो हर लॉन्गिट्यूड हमेशा सूरज के नीचे रहेंगी ऐसा नहीं है और इसी वजह से आप पता है कि आपको आपको पता है पृथ्वी गोल है इस वजह से हर लॉन्गिट्यूड पर सूरज धीरे-धीरे खिसकते हुए आता है और ये जो परछाई जो हमें आज देखने को मिल रही है चांद की वो धीरे-धीरे अलग-अलग लॉन्गिट्यूड्स को टच कर रही है और जो पूर्व की और सॉरी पश्चिम की ओर के जो जगह है उस पे ये परछाई पहले टच कर रही है और इस वजह से आपको आ, अगर आप फील्ड में ध्यान दें तो ऊपर की तरफ जो आ, आ, पीले रंग का या ऑरेंज रंग का आपको इमेज दिख रहा है उसमें आपको सूरज ज्यादा आपको ग्रहण में दिख रहा होगा क्यों इसका कारण यह है कि वो राजस्थान से फीड है आ, गुजरात और राजस्थान के आसपास की फीड है उसमें से आपको पता चलेगा कि वहां ज्यादा ग्रहण ऑलरेडी हो चुका है परछाई ज्यादा मात्रा में वहां पहुंच चुकी है जबकि हानले जो कि बहुत ज्यादा पूर्व की ओर है उसमें अभी आपको सूरज थोड़ा कम ढका दिखाई देगा इसके अलावा अलावा हमारे फील्ड में लैटिट्यूड कवरेज भी है लॉन्गिट्यूड के साथ तो आप देखेंगे हानले ये बिल्कुल उत्तर की तरफ है उत्तर लद्दाख में और नीचे कोडाई कनल ऑब्जर्वेटरी से आप फीड देख रहे हैं जहां आप को सूरज की इमेज दिख रही है ये फ्लिप्ड इमेज है ये टेलीस्कोप से ली हुई इमेज है ये फ्लिप्ड है और हम वहां से डायरेक्ट फीड आपको दिखा रहे हैं इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स इंडियन सो जो है उसकी ये ऑब्जर्वेटरी वहां पर है एक काफी फेमस सोलर फिजिक्स ऑब्जर्वेटरी वहां है जो कि 100 से भी ज्यादा सालों से वहां पर है और हमें सोलर फिजिक्स के काफी अच्छे-अच्छे डेटा उन्होंने दिए हैं तो आज वहां से भी लाइफ हम देख पा रहे हैं ये आ, इसकी इमेज और देखिए उसमें आ, आप देख सकते हैं कि हानले और कोडाई कनाल करीब करीब एक ही लॉन्गिट्यूड पे है और इस वजह से उनकी इमेज करीब करीब समान है इसके और पूर्व की तरफ अगर हमें कोई फीड मिलती जैसे कलकत्ता या फिर आगे अरुणाचल प्रदेश असम जहां पे अभी बारिश हो रही है आ, वहां से कोई फीड नहीं है अदरवाइज हम देख पाते कि वहां और कम ढका हुआ सूरज आपको दिखाई देता है तो ये हुआ लॉन्गिट्यूड कवरेज के बारे में और ऐसी ही इमेजेस हम ऐसे ऐसे मिलते जाएंगे हम आपको दिखा दे जाएंगे जी समीर हरविंदर जी ने थोड़ी देर पहले ये बताया कि मेनी पीपल हैव दिस सुपरस्टिशन दैट दे वी शुड नॉट वॉच एट सन ओनली ड्यूरिंग इक्लिप्स इट इज नॉट सो बट इट इज नथिंग टू डू विद ओनली ड्यूरिंग इक्लिप्स सन इज ऑलवेज ब्राइट एंड you should never try directly watch uh, at sun other days we don't have to tell this to people the other days it is obvious to people in during eclipse people feel interested in watching to this uh, solar disk and that is why we have to explicitly tell them ki don't watch directly so this distinction is very important there's nothing special happening uh, in terms of radiation from sun but just that your curiosity is peaked and that is why you uh, you th- think that we should you should uh, try watching solar disk so please avoid watching to sun directly on any day definitely of course uh, solar physicists have to watch it so they use filters 
and uh, their telescopes are equipped with uh, ways to i mean they can they can show the sun really big but then they have to cut out the light really uh, a lot and therefore there are special filters for that yeah, it, and it they have to also pull their telescope because it gets really hot it, so it, it imagine uh, our eyes uh, being uh, you know affected by the same kind of light would be uh, really in a bad shape so we don't want to do that uh, if you have any uh, uh, of your uh, solar eclipse goggles uh, lying around somewhere from the previous eclipse which we had also popularized uh, please go ahead and watch the eclipse through them or use a small mirror to project the light of the sun onto a far off wall and you'll be able to see the eclipse many people are also sending in now the pictures uh, taken with household instruments like channi or sieves etc where we are getting nice uh, you know shapes of the eclipse now in pune uh, i'm sitting here near the window and uh, the sun has just peeked out of the clouds which were giving us rain till now so i'm hoping <laughs> i'll be able to uh, quickly go and peek at the sun and come back here at this time using goggles uh, yeah. using solar eclipse <laughs> goggles yeah. yeah i just wanted to remind people of an experiment i'm sure all of us have done we have all burnt paper using a lens right i mean yeah. that's just a small lens and imagine the intensity of that light which is burning that paper right? right that is what we are subjecting our eyes to when we look at the sun directly so absolutely never look at the sun directly with our own eyes so just uh, say and uh, divya i want to stay with you uh, samir just mentioned that solar physicists use different filters and uh, to watch so i was it is interesting he mentioned that because i was just going to ask you what are the new instruments and uh, new uh, satellites which are going to observe sun in near future ah okay uh thanks aniket so to start with the question which uh, or the point which samir was making that solar astronomers have to do something to cut down the light dramatically and what we do typically is the following as you know that from the sun comes an entire spectrum of radiation right it has all the colors of the rainbow from violet to red in fact the sun uh, emits both at frequencies smaller than red and frequencies beyond the violet it's just that with our eyes we are limited to seeing only those so what we typically do is that we choose a very narrow window in the spectrum in the wavelength range so so that is how we cut down most of the intensity of the light which is uh, incident on our telescopes because it is actually quite dangerous for the telescope to be exposed to the full uh, sunlight as well uh coming to the question which aniket was talking about it's probably useful to first think about uh okay staying with the eclipse for a minute what is it that we can study during a solar eclipse right so what is very interesting is that uh the sun as was mentioned earlier is surrounded by a gas cloud uh, maybe cloud is not the best word but it is surrounded by really very hot gas which is what is called the solar corona normally when uh, on a, on a normal day we are not able to see this because the sun is so much brighter that than the corona that for the same reasons as why you can't see the stars during the day you also cannot see the corona during the day but when the disk of the sun is hidden uh, behind the moon then we can see this corona it suddenly comes into being and if i can share an image i would like to uh, share my screen for just a moment to do that just give me a minute please uh okay here we go right so hopefully on your screen there is an image which show which is showing uh the a picture taken during a solar eclipse right i myself cannot see that at the moment so i am not sure what is there on the screen can somebody confirm please yeah yeah we can see it don't do go ahead okay oh very good okay so now what you can see is that there is a lot of very strange and very detailed structure which you see around the sun and just to make it look beautiful the on the sun has been pasted an image taken of the sun but not during the solar eclipse naturally right and what you see is that there is so much structure so much beauty in this light which is coming from around the sun and this region is actually full of magnetic fields from the sun and it is the matter which is trapped in these magnetic fields which is reflecting a little bit of light from the sun less than 1 millionth of the light which is coming from the sun and which we are able to see so this solar eclipse provides us actually a wonderful opportunity 
to understand what is happening in this region, which is normally hidden from us. So a lot of experiments are planned all over the world to study the, these coronal regions. And in fact, to uh, and I'll stop sharing my screen here uh, for now, and also to study these regions and a few other science aspects, a lot of uh, new solar missions have recently been either already launched or they are close to being launched. So the one which uh, we have all heard about lately is something called the Parker Solar Probe, which was launched by NASA in August of 2018. Now, this is a very exciting mission which will last till 2025. And this mission is going to go progressively closer and closer and closer to the sun. And at the end of its life in 2025, it would be about less than 5% of the distance between the sun and the earth. That is still about 7 million kilometers, but that is uh, still will be such a detailed view of the sun as compared to what we have ever had. Already, this is the closest man-made object which has gone to the sun. It has it is at 47% of the distance between the earth and the sun right now. Okay? And its focus is going to be to make detailed measurements of the gases and the electric and magnetic fields which will be around this satellite, whatever is flowing past this satellite. And it will also be looking not directly at the sun, but very close to the sun to make the most detailed images of this solar corona. Another instrument which was lost, launched just earlier this year in February is the Solar Orbiter, which is a mission of the European Science uh, Agency. It will also get close to the sun, not as close as Parker, but it will come to about 28% of the distance between the Earth and the sun. And it, again, it will measure not just the gases and electric and magnetic fields. It also has instruments using which it will look at the sun directly, invisible, ultraviolet, extreme ultraviolet, and X-rays. And sometime next year, we are hoping to launch an, uh, an Indian satellite by the name Aditya L1, which actually will have, uh, again, a fantastic suite of instruments to, to give us information about the sun. It will look at the sun directly in UV light. It will have the instruments which create an artificial eclipse, to, uh, which are called coronographs, and it will look at that in visible light. It will be able to study the X-rays from the sun. It will also have instruments to measure the composition and energy of the gases which are flowing past the sun, and also measure the magnetic fields around itself. Right. So it's a really uh, excellent uh, set of instruments which will be there. And I just noticed Durgesh has joined uh, uh, us as well, who's actually the PI of one of those instruments and will be able to tell you more about it in great detail. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, lovely. Uh, and yes, we, it's a very opportune time for uh, Professor Durgesh Tripathi to join us, uh, who's the uh, leader of the team which will uh, send Aditya L1 up. And uh, they've been working hard on it for a long time. And uh, we are looking at success very soon. Uh, he has a nice background of the eclipse. <laughs> you notice? <laughs> Lovely. Yes, we are all rooting for the eclipse. In fact, I just want to uh, take a moment. So I've just set up uh, quickly because I cannot go out and, I'm, and I think I'm missing the eclipse. So what I've just set up here is uh, a, a mirror here in my window. Maybe uh, just a moment. A mirror here, and I put a piece of paper on top of it. As you can see, that is a very small yeah. hole, and it, I only had a big mirror. So I put that, and with that, I can, I can, I can, I can see on my board the eclipse, and the sun is quite a bit eclipsed. Can you see that small dot there? And that is the eclipse. Yes, so my colleague is helping me out, but you can see. So this is something simple that you can do at home if you are not able to see it directly and there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, you can always <coughs> take precautions and watch it safely from your home. Uh, first, always keep watching our uh, webcast where we have experts joining us all the time and uh, letting us know about their work and their experiences and their views about the eclipse. So let's welcome uh, Durgesh Tripathi as well. Uh, so <laughs> welcome here, and, and of course, uh, we are eager to hear what you have to say about eclipses in general and this one in particular. Oh, well, good morning, everyone. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my my sound, my head is just blocking the annular part of the 
of the of the eclipse which i didn't want to actually do it i just wanted to be in a corner so that people can see what actually they should be seeing when the when the at the peak of the of the eclipse today um i mean solar eclipse for me and I, as well as for divya i mean we say that the, the sun is uh, sun gives us the life for me and and divya not only in a indirect way but also direct way it gives us life because we work because the sun is there and we try to understand what the sun is all about and the the eclipses they for us uh, hold prime importance because um uh, i actually started uh, my phd by looking at the at the data which came from soho uh, by doing artificial eclipsing so um uh, that's what uh, 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 i was going to say that when people consider that these eclipses are not good and you know they can have problems we are living for last 20 years at least me i have my career in solar physics since last 20 years and uh, they the day i started doing science or doing phd i started looking at the eclipse data and not the general eclipse but we started doing eclipse by ourselves so that so that we can get good data and try to see it um i mean i i when i was growing up the first experience i had was in 94 or 96 i don't even remember there was a total solar eclipse and at home uh, everybody was supposed to be inside uh, not taking bath uh, during the eclipse time and sitting quiet not doing anything but i i still remember me and my sister peeped out and and we had this um, this thing which people use at as a filter for uh, for wheat flour thing right so you take that and you know and and look at look at the eclipse through that i don't know if we did it right way or wrong way but but the best way to now i know that it was to do a projection and see uh, the solar eclipse um but at that time it was such a taboo and uh, i i i feel that uh, that would have been very nice time because that was i think it was uh, one of the longest one in india uh, for for some time um but then uh, the first eclipse when i saw uh, that was in 2006 in uh, in turkey um at that time i realized wow i mean there is no wonder that people were uh, sort of scared uh, in the past because you are you, you're not used to these things you know and when the sun comes and essentially blocks the uh, no the moon comes and essentially blocks the 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 sun it appears very spooky and you know all these birds uh, flying away and you see this shadow moving of course you have to get clear visibility of the eclipse and i'm glad that the first eclipse i saw it was bamboozling you know it bamboozled my mind and so when people who are like scared for these things i can understand but now we know so much about these phenomena and we know that essentially is nothing but just the shadow of the moon moving essentially if somebody if the sun is shining and a bigger person or right anybody who comes in between you and the sun it will create a shadow on your own body it's, it's just that and nothing more like that and it just the 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 moon moves around and it comes at some point just right uh, gives a right uh, size and it gives you a total solar eclipse and if the size is very smaller depending on the orbit then it gives you annular solar eclipse so it's it's just it's just a, a, a matter of matter of fact that just uh, the moon is moon's orbit is like that and it turns out to be a really interesting and nice phenomena when you really want to understand what the uh, what the sun's outer atmosphere is made of and there have been number of discoveries done uh, just by looking at the eclipse data for example helium uh, was not uh, discovered at the earth and astronomers looking at the eclipse and that eclipse actually happened in in india in 1869 um, uh, no 1859 uh, in guntur when uh, when astronomers they put their spectrograph in the corona and they observed this emission line you know my god a new element and it all fit properly in the periodic table and now we know that helium exists but it came from the eclipse data uh, similarly now we know that uh, you know the solar corona which we see during the eclipses is uh, as uh, professor dibya over i was talking about that is it's a hot gas you know it's more than a million degrees and uh, that challenges the solar astronomers for so long and and we don't really understand and and it's is such a beautiful fascinating phenomena it gives that uh, that you know you really need to discover new science new physics and you learn every day any data you look from the sun is is very unique 
So that's what I do. I actually get really bamboozled uh, when I look at solar eclipse. And last year, me and uh, Professor Dibyandu Nandi, Dipankar Banerjee, um, we all went to IAU meeting, which was in Argentina, and, and this was uh, arranged um, during the total solar eclipse. And the weather, I mean, it was cloudy just 10 minutes before the, the total, totality happened. And then it got so clear, and you saw this ring of fire. You know, wow, that was fascinating again. So any total solar eclipse, any annular solar eclipse, I go around chase. Uh, last year we did that in uh, uh, in Kera in December, and that was beautiful. I mean, we did only see some part of it because it was hide and seek phenomena, as uh, Sabir said at some point. You know, hide and seek of uh, celestial bodies, and uh, that was fun as well. I'm, I'm, I, we couldn't see it the, at the time when it was complete annular, uh, but uh, but just being with the crowd, you know, and enjoying the the celestial phenomena, it's, it's just a unique opportunity. And uh, an experience. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Durgesh. Uh, so, just to update our viewers, uh, we are uh, now seeing we have passed the maximum uh, eclipse time for the westernmost longitudes in India, like Mumbai and uh, uh, I think also Pune. And we soon will be reaching the annular phase in the Rajasthan field. Uh, which we are going to see at the top. Uh, we are also getting a lot of interesting images from our readers, uh, our viewers. I will uh, share some of the images in some time. Uh, in the meantime, uh, we can uh, go back to uh, Professor Priya Hassan. Uh, Priya, uh, we uh, several people mentioned uh, eclipses. Uh, uh, the last is eclipse and before that also there was a couple of annual eclipses or uh, total eclipses which uh, were in, uh, viewed from india can you tell what uh, your experiences about watching previous eclipse, eclipses so the last eclipse which we had in december 26 december in hyderabad it was partial but uh, we had a, a, an event in a, in one of the parks in the city and we had more than 300 people who actually turned up for the event and it was a really interesting, good event. Lots of people around. We followed the the the, the thing, but we were following the theme of eclipse eating. So we um, the, you know, we served some food, some biscuits, some tea to people while the eclipse was on, as part of the debugging thing, debunking thing of making people eat during the eclipse. We also had some talks about the sun and what actually causes the eclipse basically explaining people how there's nothing very uh, exotic happening at that time that people need to you know fear the event and uh, we spoke a little bit about the solar missions etc and uh, uh, the projections so the children we actually had solar filters we have a tele we have a six inch dobsonian telescope so people could actually see the eclipse through the telescope and uh, we also did some projection events and uh, since it was a park in the city so a lot of people even came home, who came there who were normal, you know, morning walkers who stepped in and see that something was happening. So this was early in the morning, it was eight o'clock in the morning. So a lot of morning walkers were there. And um, hence it was a very successful, good event. And I think people did enjoy it a lot. Yeah. Professor Shauche, what is your best eclipse memory of any of the past eclipses? Uh, you're on mute, Professor Shauche. So that was during the last eclipse where we uh, some experiments along with uh, Citizen Science Forum where uh, uh, just to uh, debunk all these myths about not eating uh, during the eclipse and food going bad and such things, we conducted some experiments in Pune as well as in different parts of the country with the help of volunteers and we try to find out the bacterial load in the air as well as uh, uh, we did a lot of experiments. We also tried to find out if bacterial load in the food or if we deliberately put some bacteria in the food, how do they behave? So that was a very uh, interesting experience working along with the students, designing the experiments, asking students to conduct the experiments at three, four different locations simultaneously coordinating those experiments 
and then analyzing the data so that was a very very interesting experience so aniket can i can i show a picture uh, which yeah, yeah, just sure. taken uh, in our dome area so i'll just share my screen yeah so can you see this picture this was just taken uh, within our ayuka dome samir you will re uh, recognize it um which you can see so there are a number of holes in the dome and the sunlight is just going through so you can see all these uh, partial eclipse pictures so multiple of them over here and this is just uh, coming through a different holes uh, from the dome so as you can see as many images as uh, as the holes this is quite fascinating isn't it yes it is very nice so i was also going to uh, show us couple of pictures which we received from our uh, viewers uh this is one picture of the uh, uh, from mumbai i suppose where where there was thick cloud cover and a uh, cloud cover is so thick that they could directly uh, see the sun uh, yeah similar experience we had in uh, in kerala last year uh, i mean the the cloud was playing the role of the filter you know essentially it's just blocking the light you can see very very dim uh, picture so very very nice so we are now approaching uh, the annular phase we are i think more than 90% cover is there and uh, in just few minutes we should be reaching the annular phase in rajasthan field we uh, i will also share one more picture in the meantime which is about using trees as a pinhole just a minute so here you can see a uh, light filtering through the tree for tree canopy and pin those small uh, areas through which light sunlight can pass through the tree canopy act as pin holes and then you see lots of uh, crescents on the ground so you don't really need a fancy equipment to observe solar eclipse you can also do these kind of simple activities from your home so durgesh uh so you mentioned about the space mission which uh, india is planning uh, it said uh, its name is aditya l1 so what is l1 can you talk about that um, you are on yeah right so essentially you know uh, murphy's laws say that uh, um, whenever you are not looking at something things happen and earlier when uh, people used to uh, launch satellites put into earth orbit um what they realized that all the the large scale activities which has uh, strong space weather effects and all that would happen in the night time and therefore you would not see any data um so people were looking at uh, at a location where uh, they could have 24/7 observation uh, from the sun and uh, it turns out that uh, the lagrange point the first lagrange point is the location which is in between the sun and earth so essentially if you look at the two body problem classical mechanics you find that there are five such positions where uh, in some way the the gravity to to put it in a very layman term the gravity between sun and earth uh, neutralizes uh, so there are five such points one is uh, between sun and earth which is uh, 15 million kilometers away from the from the sun uh, from the earth towards the sun uh l2 is just uh, on the opposite side uh, of the earth so you have uh, sun earth and l2 l1 is in between and then you have l3 on the other side of the sun and l4 and l5 are making some angle from the sun earth line going l4 there and l4 uh, l5 uh, below so if you put anything at l1 so when the earth is moving l1 is also moving along with because it just falls on the sun earth line 
So if you put a satellite there, then there is no night time for that particular satellite. And therefore you can have a 24 seven continuous monitoring of the sun because studying the solar activity is not only understanding the signs of the sun itself, but also whatever happens on the sun has direct impact on our space weather, uh, geo, uh, geo satellite communication, um, and so on and so forth, electric power grids and, and stuff like that. So what essentially you want to do is to look at the sun, study the dynamic phenomena happening with the final aim of being able to predict. And therefore you need to continue. Uh, just, just uh, I have to stop you because we have annularity at, at Rajasthan. So, wow. wow. Let's look so at that. the top feed on, on the right. You can see the annual, uh, annual solar eclipse. And it is going to last for about a couple of minutes. So you can clearly see uh, moon, uh, the dark disk of moon uh, inside the solar disk. And we see a nice ring of fire. This is what we have been waiting for. <laughs> wow. Oh, so we are thankful to uh, this group which has uh, shown this uh, image from uh, Rajasthan to us. Uh, without to go anywhere. Alap. See, Rajasthan. I like the Sameer. I like the name of this group, Cosmo Sapiens. <laughs> yes, that's what we are. <laughs> Probably that's that's what we are going to become when, uh, as we start going to space. You see, at the bottom, you can see uh, at some places the moon is now touching the uh, edge of the sun, and at some places you could see that it was uh, there were some tiny bead-like structures. So I, I wish we could uh, rewind this a bit, but you can always rewind on the live feed. Uh, these are called Bailey's beads and basically uh, uh, they appear because the moon surface is not very smooth and uh, it's not a uh, clear cut sharp disk. Uh, it's got valleys and mountains and because of that when the the higher, uh, see them happening now also on the left edge, uh, if, if, if a mountain uh, touches the edge first and but then there's a valley besides it which is still letting the light through. Uh, we get these things called Bailey's beads. And this is in Rajasthan where we are not going to get 99% coverage, which is going to the maximum in India. You can still see some of the Bailey's beads happening on the left. Amazing, this uh, site. There you go. And uh, so because of, uh, because of the moon being slightly away from a point where it could cover the sun completely, we have the moon's, uh, uh, sh moon's uh, shadow, let's say the silhouette of the moon, slightly smaller than the sun. And it has just finished doing a ring of annularity on the sun uh, as seen from Rajasthan. We, I think, are now about to go into annularity phase in uh, Haryana and Punjab in a few minutes from now. Uh, and after that, we'll, uh, uh, it will proceed into Uttarakhand and into the Himalayas. But as I was saying, that uh, you're able to see, you were able to see the uh, the feed in which you could see the Bailey's beads happening. These are because of the valleys and mountains on the moon's surface. So just imagine you did not just see the moon going past it; you could even detect some of the valleys and mountains there. Uh, lovely experience, I think, <laughs> and all of us are excited here. And thank you all for actually sharing this moment with us. It's it's been uh, you know a, a, a while we've been talking about this uh, that it will come up and we'll we'll see it happening. And there it is now. We can see it, and we've already experienced one place. Uh, <clears throat> other places like Hanle, as you can see in the feed here, are uh, going to get it uh, get the close to annularity. They will not get ninety nine percent. I am wishing that we had a feed from the exact belt where exact center of the belt where the moon would be seen at the maximum 
covering the sun. And at that place, you would have probably looking at today's image from the Rajasthan feed, you'd probably have uh, Bailey's beads uh, or a necklace of them shining for about 30 seconds. That's uh, approximately the time uh, annularity will be seen uh, in this part of the uh, annularity belt. So amazing, uh, this, this was a thrilling experience. Uh, we are still waiting for uh, and hoping that uh, the clouds will clear in Kurukshetra uh, and uh, the technical difficulties will go away and we'll be able to see the feed in a few moments. This has happened often and uh, we have given up hope, but then suddenly <laughs> at the last moment, we get to see the real eclipse. Yes, it does. How are you guys? Spectacular. <laughs> and don't forget, there's not, no harm in eating or drinking during eclipse. We should celebrate this. Uh, with nice, probably a cup of coffee or something like that. Oh yes, Anikit, you are making me hungry. Yes, actually, so uh, we have we have been joined by uh, Professor Mukherjee Chaudhary again <laughs> uh, is here with us, and we have uh, Neeraj, uh, Dr. Neeraj Amarujam from South Africa, who has just finished uh, watching the African eclipse. And they're joining us to have some, uh, I hope you brought your chai, but I definitely have my kappa here. <laughs> and we're going to have a quick sip. Uh, I've, I've actually kept it uh, co uh, getting cold. <laughs> I don't mind it being cold. And over the whole uh, period of the eclipse, because I forgot to have it when I made it. So, <laughs> so there's no effect. I'm having a very stale tea, cold tea, but it's quite tasty. Uh, we, we, we are hoping to get uh, more feeds uh, to the uh, two uh, dignitaries who just came in. Uh, we just uh, finished uh, looking at the annularity from Rajasthan uh, together. I hope you also saw it on your phone or mobile devices. Oh, lovely. So we will shift again our uh, uh, feed to Kurukshetra, where Bailey's beads might be seen as it's going to go into annularity soon. Just hold on, uh, we, our team is working on showing the feed right away. <coughs> Hanle as you can see, has become really thin and crescent and there you go, Vigyan Prasar is uh, broadcasting this from Kurukshetra. You can see it's uh, the, the color is slightly pinkish reddish because of their filter, it's not because the sun has turned into something uh, weird. These things need to be filtered and we'll uh, show it full screen to you. Please don't resist any uh, any lovely emotions that might be coming. That's beautiful. <laughs> wow, this is, this is great. You can clearly see a string of pearls. And now we have Excellent. the annularity. That's lovely. Bas you have seen, all of us may have seen it multiple times uh, over last few eclipses, but still every time it, it, it still amazes you. We are at a unique location in our solar system where we have a satellite which can produce the not just total eclipse, but also annual eclipse, which is a very rare, rare thing to happen in our solar system, as far as our solar system is concerned. So it is really amazing that we, we can witness all this. So you can see it's 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 a it's a very fast movement. The shadow of the uh, moon actually moves across the Earth's surface. Uh, two thousand uh, disc, disc of the moon. And there you can see it's it's already reached the other edge, and we are seeing it about to touch. And that's the third contact. 
and and you can already see those those high points on the moon touching the edge already and the valleys are letting some light through wonderful oh <laughs> they, they change the focus focusing so I think I think people get excited at this time and they they <laughs> just just shake their equipment or something. But but it's it's an experience which really shakes you up and uh, it, it, you can get goosebumps from this even by looking at at it online. Uh, so great job and uh, we are happy that we could get the uh, feed for for the anniversary from Vigyan Prasad, which is doing it from Kurukshetra, Haryana. for this uh, solar eclipse the greatest eclipse is going to be near doshimath in uttarakhand but unfortunately we don't have feed from the, that area right right we we, we, do, we don't have any links right now and uh, uh, it's it's always a challenge in this uh, times when uh, there's a curfew everywhere and people are needing to get a pass to get any uh, even groceries sometimes and they have these people have dared to go out and set up these things uh, this uh, equipment to show us this uh, eclipse but however there there might be possibilities that their battery ran out or things like that which happen which are very practical uh, uh, things and uh, i think this is going to be the the only, the last uh, annularity feed that we will see because we'll keep looking at uh, uh, other feeds and uh, see the gradual change in the shape of the sun over the next 2 hours when the eclipse slowly ends and uh, we uh, come to the end of the program so but we still have a lot of experts coming back to us and i can see uh, uh, our friend arvind ranade in the vigyan prasad feed <laughs> well he's not joining us here unfortunately but uh, you can just get a glimpse of him so uh, we can we can turn back to uh, the experts here and uh, we can ask them their reaction what 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 do you think yeah we we'll, let's start with professor shauche uh, what was the, how many so this is your uh, how many eclipses you have seen so far and what uh, what is your, your reaction this time i mean i have seen uh, Couple of uh, eclipses so far, but I would say that this was today's was the by far most exciting experience because of uh, all these discussion with the experts and uh, feed from all over the country from different places. By far, this was the most exciting experience uh, I had today, and uh, the the event of annularity that was uh, a really, really, really very exciting experience. Watching it from uh, uh, from the feed thank you uh, durgesh hamare uh, hindi darshakon ke liye aap hindi mein kuch batayenge hum aapne pehle bellies beads ke bare mein bhi kuch kaha tha angrezi mein aap thoda hindi mein wo fir se bata batayenge to acha hoga ha um surya grahan so uh, सूर्य ग्रहण जो होता है मेरे लिए या फिर आ, मैं पहले बोला था कि आ, पहले जब सूर्य ग्रहण होता था तो आ, आप पूर्व सूर्य ग्रहण जब देखेंगे तो बहुत डरावना लगता है तो आज के बहुत साल पहले जब इतनी सारी चीजें हमको आ, नहीं पता थी एस्ट्रोनॉमी के बारे में और सन अर्थ मोशन के बारे में तो लोगों को आ, डर लगना थोड़ा संभव भी होता था लेकिन आज के हम इतना कुछ जानते हैं कि जो सन और जो सोलर इक्लिप्स होता है इसमें ऐसा कुछ नहीं है इस ऑल अबाउट कि मून मूव करता है और हमारे और सन के बीच में आ जाता है और जहां पर उसकी शैडो पड़ती है वहां दिखती है ऐसे नथिंग मोर लाइक कि हमारे और सन के बीच में कोई आ गया उसकी शैडो हमारे ऊपर से गुजर गई वो बहुत थोड़े समय के लिए रहती है तो इसेंशियली वो मून का शेडो पड़ता है हमको एक लक्ष्य दिखता है तो लेकिन जो इसका एक्सपीरियंस होता है आई मीन अगर आप टोटल सोलर एक लक्ष्य देख लेंगे तो इट्स माइंड बॉगलिंग आई मीन यू कांट डिस्क्राइब इट इन वर्ड्स 
बट एनुलर दिस इज माई फर्स्ट एनुलर एक्लिप्स एक्चुअली तो जो मैं पूरा पूरा देखा हूँ वो भी ऑनलाइन फीड में और विथ लॉ ऑफ पीपल आई मीन इक्लिप्स वॉचिंग हमेशा अच्छा होता है जब आप लोगों के साथ देखते हैं अकेले बैठ के देखना इज ऑल फाइन बट वेन यू हैव पीपल अराउंड बहुत सारे लोग होते हैं तो आप उसको एक माइंड में रिकॉर्ड कर सकते हैं कि लोगों की फीलिंग्स क्या होती हैं और किस तरह से आप अगर ऐसी जगह पे जाए जहाँ पे बर्ड्स होती हैं तो दे बर्ड्स स्टार्ट फ्लाइंग वे यू नो दे स्टार्ट ट्वीचिंग तो वो एक्सपीरियंस बहुत अलग सा होता है आपको आप कुछ और बोल रहे थे मैं पूरा सुन नहीं पाया आपका सवाल की था क्या नहीं आपने पहले बेलिस के बारे में जो बताया तो वो हिंदी में आप बता सकते हैं तो If you can say it by yourself in Hindi. Ah, <laughs> uh, sorry. Ah, uh, uh, no. Ah, uh, you uh, Belize beads. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yes, yes. I can hear you, uh, Aniket. Uh, uh, only thing I'm saying that uh, I request you or um, or or some here to say yeah. that in Hindi. <laughs> It'll be sort of difficult for me to express myself completely. धन्यवाद दुर्गेश आपने काफी चीजें बताई और एक अभी जो हमें देखने को मिला और अनुभव करने को मिला ये था बेलीज बीड्स का नजारा तो अभी आपने देखा कि सूरज की जो प्रतिमा हमें गोल अच्छी सी दिखाई देती है उसके सामने चांद आ गया था अपने पथ पर घूमते हुए और इसके वजह से हमें आज ग्रहण दिख रहा है लेकिन इसमें आज हमें ये भी पता है कि चांद अपनी दूरी पर जो घूमता है वो थोड़ी सी लंब गोलाकार है मतलब एक एलिप्टिकल शेप में है इसलिए कभी कभी वो पृथ्वी से थोड़ा दूर होता है और कभी पृथ्वी के जरा पास होता है आज वो इस ऐसी स्थिति पे है कि थोड़ा सा दूर है जिसके वजह से वो सूरज को पूरा ढक नहीं पा रहा है और इस कारण से हमें एक स्पेशल एक्लिप्स दिखाई दे रही है मतलब हम कभी कभी हम तो डरते हैं कि जो पूर्ण सूर्य ग्रहण है उसे नहीं देखना चाहिए वगैरह लेकिन आप देखिए दुनिया में ऐसे भी लोग हैं हमारे तरह और काफी ऐसे लोग हैं जिन्हें ये देखना पसंद है और हम उसको चेस करते हैं जैसे अभी दुर्गेश जी ने कहा कि उन्होंने भी इक्लिप्सेस देखी हैं सबने यहाँ पे इक्लिप्सेस देखी हैं अलग अलग समय पर लेकिन आप देख सकते हैं पार्शियल इक्लिप्स जो कि इसमें सूरज थोड़ा सा ढका दिखता है आप देख सकते हैं पूरी इक्लिप्स संपूर्ण इक्लिप्स जिसमें सूरज पूरा ढक जाता है लेकिन ये स्पेशल इक्लिप्स है उसमें भी जिसमें सूरज करीब करीब नब्बे प्रतिशत से निन्यानवे प्रतिशत तक ढका जा रहा है आज और इस वजह से जो चांद की सतह पर जो कुछ गहरे गहरे खाइया हैं या फिर कुछ ऊंचे पहाड़ हैं उसकी हमें यहाँ पे एक झलक देखने को मिल रही है ये कैसे तो आप देख सकते हैं कि अभी अगर आप इधर रिवाइंड करके देख लें बाद में तो आप देख पाएंगे कि उसमें आपको चांद की जो एज है उसकी और सूरज की एज के बीच में कभी कभी कुछ छोटे छोटे ऐसे मणि जैसे दिखेंगे तो आप सोचेंगे कि चांद अगर गोल है एकदम समान है तो ये कैसे हो रहा है तो आपको बता दूं कि इसको कहते हैं बेलीज बी बेलीज बीट्स और ये सम, काफी समझा हुआ एक फिनोम है जिसमें चांद की सतह के ऊपर जो पहाड़ है उसके और वैलीज के बीच में से प्रकाश हम तक पहुंच पाता है जब ये एज दोनों टच होती है और इस वजह से हमें वहां पर एक सुंदर माला जैसी दिख सकती है या फिर माला के मणि जैसा कुछ दिख सकता है तो आ, आपको पता है कि सोलर एक्लिप्स में डायमंड रिंग हमें दिखाई देती है और लेकिन ये एक स्पेशल एक्लिप्स है जहाँ पे कंप्लीट नेकलेस हमको मिल सकता है समीर वी हैव आई फीड फ्रॉम हानले इन लद्दाख एंड देर इज अ मैक्सिम इक्लिप्स देर एट द मोमेंट हनले जो लद्दाख में है यहाँ पर भारत की कह जा सकती है कि दूसरी सबसे बड़ी दूरबीन स्थित है सारे खगोल शास्त्री उसकी तरफ उसका इस्तेमाल करते हैं और आज लेकिन वहां से एक स्पेशल फीड हमें मिल रही है इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एस्ट्रोफिजिक्स की तरफ से और आप देख सकते हैं कि जिसमें हनले की फीड हमें मिल रही है और करीब करीब नब्बे से ज्यादा सूरज वहां पर ढका हुआ दिखाई दे रहा है एक ऑलमोस्ट ऐसे लग रहा है कि एक वो चांद ही है लेकिन उल्टा है इसमें जो डार्क आप चीज देख रहे हैं वो चांद है और जो प्रकाशित भाग जो देख रहे हैं वो सूरज का एक छोटा सा हिस्सा है जो कि चांद के पीछे से हमें दिखाई दे रहा है अभी कि यहाँ पे मैक्सिमम फेज है हनले में हम इसे कोशिश करें फुल स्क्रीन दिखाने की तो 
और उसके साथ साथ राजस्थान में आप देख सकते हैं ऊपर ही आ, अभी सू, सूरज धीरे धीरे बाहर निकलने लगा है चांद के पीछे से और उसकी झलक हमें ज्यादा ज्यादा दिखाई दे रही है लेकिन दोनों अभी आ, बहुत सुंदर क्रेसेंट शेप जिसको कहते हैं चंद्राकार शेप में दिखाई दे रहे हैं दोनों फील्ड में so, let's bring, uh, let's bring in, uh, Neeraj, Neeraj from, uh, South Africa. Uh, Neeraj was earlier uh, with uh, NCRA in Pune and now he has moved to South Africa and he is now chair of the outreach uh, committee of the African Astronomical Society. So Neeraj, what was the experience of Eclipse in the in African continent? Uh, hi, yeah, uh, I think my video is off. So Neeraj, you can go ahead, Samir will switch on the uh, video. Okay. Yeah, so I am right now in Cape Town in South Africa. Uh, we Cape Town does not have an eclipse, unfortunately. Uh, the shadow does not fall on Cape Town. However, the eclipse started here in Africa. It started uh, at the edge of Democratic Republic of Congo, went through Central African uh, Republic, uh, South Sudan, and uh, Ethiopia and Eritrea, and then went on to the Arabian Peninsula and then to India, where you're seeing it right now. Uh, so here we had a large campaign uh, across many countries. Uh, we, we had, you know, we had done resource material like posters and handbooks, got them translated in various languages. Uh, and the three teams, uh, one in Ethiopia in the path of annularity in Lalibela, uh, in one in Nairobi in Kenya, and one in Arusha in Tanzania, who were transmitting the eclipse through the telescope, which we just finished seeing. The eclipse is finished in Africa now, and we handed over the eclipse to you guys now to watch. Uh, and very soon. I think in a couple of hours from now, the eclipse will then move on uh, to Taiwan and then end in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so in some sense, you know, all of us, like Durga said, are stuck in our houses. Uh, eclipse is something to be enjoyed together in public with your friends and family. Uh, usually you would gather in huge numbers in public parks and planetaria to see it together. Unfortunately, because of COVID-19, we can't. But, in, but then because of that, I think something very nice happened, which is that... Uh, a number of people across so many countries have made an effort to, to produce uh, live feeds from the telescopes. And, and the fact that I can sit here in Cape Town and watch the eclipse progress like a Mexican wave, you know, uh, from, from Central Africa to East Africa to Dubai to, to Pakistan to India and then to Tibet and, and then China and then you know, uh, the rest of Southeast China and then uh, Taiwan. And there are feeds from outside the path of annularity, you know, from all the way from Russia, the north. To, you know, Indonesia and, and, and uh, South Korea and Vietnam. And the fact that I can see all these different feeds from across the world and see the eclipse progress bit by bit, bit by bit, where you know it leaves one place, it starts another place, etc. Kind of brings us all together in another sense. And I think it's really nice. And, and, and that, that, that's been happening as well. So we are asking everybody how, uh, how many eclipses you have seen in the past. So what is your count? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I want to make it a point to eat during the eclipse uh, <laughs> in front of everybody. Yes, we invite uh, everybody to eat. It, it's, it's almost lunch time, and there's no reason to not eat at this time. So yeah. uh, let's do. Yeah, and please, yeah, please do eat and drink. Now, so here is just morning for us here. Uh, I think I think there was an eclipse, the 1980 eclipse uh, when I was in Chennai. Of course, uh, was a, was a disaster in terms of public relations. I know the government had told people not to go out of the houses, unfortunately, and everybody was, was indoors. I wasn't allowed to go see it by my family either, unfortunately. And then there was a partial eclipse later when I was in high school, which I saw uh, and, and showed all my neighbors uh, you know, in Chennai. But the first, the, the total eclipse I saw, which, which I'll never forget, was in Kalpi in, in Uttar Pradesh in 1995. When I was doing a master's, we all took buses and went down and saw, saw it. And that was just amazing. That happened during Diwali. And... You know, there were some 500 of us in this huge uh, Maidan in Kalpi. Uh, you know, people are shouting and screaming and uh, we all call it students. And Eclipse progressed and some of us, you know, with, with cameras and telescopes. And totality happened. It was in the belt of totality. And then there's complete silence, right? Not just the entire world became silent because, you know, uh, but every, imagine 500 college students becoming completely silent and not shouting and screaming. Because, you know, it was just completely awe-inspiring. I think somebody earlier mentioned as to what, a, what an experience it is. And in the past, you know, and, and when I saw the total eclipse, you know, it was it was one of the best moments in my life. But I could also begin to understand why cultures across the world uh, were scared. You know, if you do not understand what the eclipse is due to, 
it could be a scary experience because we know what it is and understand it is an awe inspiring and an, and an amazing experience but it could be you no know, you understand why it was scary to people right uh, and then uh, i saw the annular eclipse uh, last year in december 26 from from the, again the path of annularity in uti from the radio astronomy center of mcra which again was was simply amazing it was very different from total eclipse uh, and it was amazing in a very different way and of course we all seen enough lunar eclipses you know the lunar eclipses are much more common and we've seen a lot of them and this is my first eclipse i'm seeing from across the world without leaving my living room <laughs> that's a that's a big array of experiences <laughs> yeah yeah well, we all want to be eclipse chasers right so yeah sure yeah um, let's move on to professor raichaudhuri so you what is what about you you also also would have you had your fair share of eclipses no, I, I, I'm not an eclipse chaser, but uh, um, uh, very much the uh, the same ones that uh, that Neeraj talked about. Uh, uh, 1980, I remember, uh, I I did not listen to my parents. Uh, my mother did not want me to go out, but I did. Uh, but uh, there also, we had to watch it uh, um, uh, through television at that time. Um, uh, but uh, um, uh, actually, uh, we were uh, I, I I was in Calcutta at that time. And we did not uh, have a very good view. The best view was 95. 95, uh, like Neeraj, I was I was in Rajasthan. In fact, from Ayuka, we had a whole big trip. Uh, uh, future director of Ayuka at that time was Naresh Dadish. The Naresh Dadish is a uh, uh, native village, uh, Churu, in in, uh, in, uh, in Rajasthan, was in the zone of totality, and a lot of us went together. And one of the things that I won't uh, forget ever is the fact that this was the morning after diwali and the diwali uh, um, uh, and through the night we traveled uh, in a bus through villages which were lit by these little diyas all over and in the in the entire night um, the little uh, little uh, lamps uh, were were uh, outlining all the little houses in the villages and we went through there and we reached the, reached this little village and then um, uh, in, in the morning early morning the this whole spectacle the, the first real, real eclipse of my life uh, uh, was absolutely mind blowing because it was a quite a long eclipse. And uh, as as you said earlier in this uh, in this broadcast before, eclipses change your life. And every single eclipse, it's like seeing the Taj Mahal. You go there, and every time you go back, it surprises you. And every time you see an eclipse, it surprises you because not not because you know it is different, but it is a, a almost. It, that's the closest to a religious experience I've had, and I'm not a religious man. And of course, uh, you know, you need to drink and eat during the eclipse. And we we've been doing this, and we had we you know very good food during that trip as well. But what what happens in the eclipse is that you also <clears throat> uh, look at nature itself, and nature stands still. Suddenly, uh, light goes away, and uh, and, uh, and 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 the birds are unnerved. The animals are unnerved. They 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 think that there's something uh, unnatural is happening, and, and we know, of course, this is un not, nothing unnatural. This is a natural thing. It's a shadow of the moon, but it hasn't happened very uh, very often. But you can that tells you, as you said before, why humans have been uh, um, uh, very afraid of it. I mean, we've known that this is the shadow of the moon for a long time. Aryabhatta in the uh, the sixth century worked it out, and Aryabhatta told us it is that. So uh, it, it's not that we didn't know that 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 this is. Um, but but then people tell us from myth, from all kinds of things, that uh, it's going to be um, um, bad for us. It, the Rahu and the Ketu and all kinds of uh, stories uh, come from our myths. Uh, but you know, e all through our tradition, even our tradition, I'm not going to the Western tradition, even in Indian tradition, the mathematicians, the astronomers. The, even the astrologers, like uh, like uh, Aryabhatta, who was working out um, uh, positions of uh, of uh, uh, the the stars, the planets, etc., uh, through mathematics, worked it out. I mean, it's a very rational explanation. The fact that it is it is a shadow, and the fact that it happens, it doesn't happen all the time, uh, is 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 fantastic. Uh, in the next uh, hundred years from India, we will see another five eclipses, and so in my lifetime, if I stay in India. I might not see many, but uh, of course we are mobile, and as Neeraj pointed out, we can see now everything through the internet, and you can actually follow the whole thing. 
This is the first time I think um, such an eclipse uh, is being followed across India like this. You know, it's wonderful. I mean, I, I, in the December eclipse too, I did not uh, see so many feeds coming from uh, this, this path. Um, and the weather, I don't know, was, wasn't that good. But now suddenly it started off cloudy in many places, but it looks like uh, we've started to see all this. Um, I went on uh, several TV channels today uh, in between uh, um, talking to you in the morning and then, and it is amazing how much discussion on Indian TV channels is happening on the relation between the coronavirus and the corona of the sun. And, and it's, it, these, these words get mixed up. Uh, virus, uh, somebody said from Madras, from Chennai, that uh, the coronavirus will go away tomorrow and it's gone viral. And, and the corona of the sun can be seen during eclipses and the coronavirus. All are getting mixed up. And people, I don't know, people latch onto words rather than concepts, I think. And the fact that somebody, in some, some, some scientist, quote unquote, apparently said that the ultraviolet rays from the sun is going to come and kill the coronavirus today. And as Divya Oberoi said in the morning too, we don't get the, uh, the, the ultraviolet rays from the sun. If we did, we would have skin cancer. The ozone layer's job is to stop the ultraviolet rays from the sun. We, in order to do ultraviolet astronomy, we have to send satellites up into space. Why would we send AstroSat up into space if we can, could get ultraviolet rays up on the Earth? So people are mind-bogglingly confused. People are confused. People think that two Tulsi leaves put in my, my, my food is going to make it all right. And we can fight the evil demon with two leaves. This is just amazingly mind-boggling, dumb. And, and, and so the, the fact that um, we are just looking at a shadow, and under this shadow, uh, we are, we've seen something that lasts a few hours, and the actual event lasts you know, minutes, seconds, but it's beautiful. And why can't people just look at this event like a momentous event in their life happens once, twice, three times in there? I mean, I, I've known people who, ha who chase eclipses. Owen Gingrich, who I studied with uh, at Harvard University, has seen 57 eclipses in his life because he goes where the eclipses go. But if you stay in one place in your lifetime, you'll see probably one or even none. Because in, at any place on the earth, uh, an eclipse happens, a total eclipse happens every 300 years or something like that. In the same country, maybe 10 times in a century. But if you can eclipse, if you can chase these eclipses, and nothing's happened to these people, they've chased, chased eclipses all over the world. So all this discussion going on for many days about the fact that there are two uh, eclipses, two annual eclipses within a few months, and that is why the coronavirus has come and it's going to go away. And you know, people don't even think the fact that these two eclipses that you're seeing is from India only. And, and maybe Pakistan and, and some countries in, in the Middle East and, and, and Africa, as, as, as Neeraj pointed out. But this is a shadow that's moving around. And, and then, you know, you see the most people have died in Italy and, uh, and in, in Spain and, and, and in England and, and the US. Poor guys don't see the eclipse, but their people are dying because of us, because we are causing the coronavirus, because this moon shadow is falling on us. So, I mean, this is the kind of stuff that's going on in all the TV channels right now. And I think uh, we should we should stand up against it and tell people to just go out and see what's happening out there. That's wonderful. Yeah, you mentioned uh, the confusion between solar corona and uh, the coronavirus, and we have somebody who studies the corona of sun. So Dibendu, uh, let's come here. To, yeah. Uh, so historically, uh, eclipses have been important for development of astronomy. Several. Breakthrough experiments have happened during the eclipses. So, like uh, helium was discovered during a during an eclipse, or uh, the. It, so, can you uh, talk about how eclipses are used in astronomical research, uh, or earlier were used before the advent of space era and things like that? Yeah, uh, sure. I mean, uh, 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 first of all, I'm happy to return back, and I've been following uh, you folks. I think you're doing a wonderful job of of. Uh, you know, showcasing this eclipse uh, throughout the country. This is a great initiative, particularly because you're pulling in uh, so many efforts from all, all around India. It's, it's just great to see the enthusiasm. Uh, so to come back to your question, um, I think the, the most spectacular uh, scientific success uh, in terms of uh, uh, utilizing an eclipse uh, for, for 
testing uh, some of the ideas that uh, that we have developed is is I think this eclipse ed, uh, expedition by Arthur Eddington um, uh, to South Africa. I don't I forget the exact year. I I think somebody here may know about 1919. 1919. Yes, I think that was the first uh, uh, I think uh, important test of Albert Einstein's uh, uh, theory of relativity. Uh, and uh, uh, there are some amazing stories about this uh, expedition where you know this this folks went and they put up tents uh, somewhere out uh, in the wild uh, and then there's some issues with clouds and they had two different uh, uh, locations that they had earmarked but uh, somehow at the last moment things magically worked out and Arthur Linton could do this uh, measurements and he came back uh, to the UK and, and did the analysis and that was the first uh, confirmation of, of, of uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. Uh, and this is like a huge, this is a huge uh, uh, success, uh, early success for Einstein. And this is, I mean, to think of it is kind of uh, funny because, uh, you know, another important prediction of Einstein's general theory of relativity, which is the gravitational waves, were just tested just some time back uh, based on much more sophisticated instrumentation of the huge, big, uh, you know, interferometric detector, which is which is the LIGO network, uh, which of course also IUTA is, is involved in, and many Indians are are involved in. Uh, so that was that was one of the biggest scientific successes of of, of experiments done during eclipses. Uh, coming coming to the solar side, uh, uh, if you look at the corona, you mentioned uh, uh, work on the sun's corona. This is important from the perspective that. Uh, the activity that is generated in the sun's corona and uh, the evolution of the magnetic structure of the sun's corona. When I mean, the corona exists because of the sun's magnetic field and because of magnetic heating, uh, the coronal temperatures rise to something about uh, a million degrees Kelvin. Uh, so this magnetic field evolution and the structure actually determines the environment in space. So there is something called space weather and believe it or not, the environment in space changes, and these changes are governed by the sun. And it's the coronal dynamics that governs these changes. But observing the sun's corona is, is extremely difficult under normal circumstances because the flux of photons, or the light, the intensity of light that comes from the sun's disk, the main part of the sun, is so much that it overwhelms the, the amount of light that comes from the corona, which is a, a very low density region surrounding the sun. Uh, eclipses where, where the moon basically completely covers the sun's disk and therefore stops the light from the disk uh, to reach Earth provides this wonderful natural opportunity for the corona to become visible, uh, the faint light from the corona. And this is when we can actually test our theoretical ideas and, and the, the models for the evolution of the coronal structure because during this total eclipses, you can actually make observations of the corona and test this theory out. Uh, so this is, I think, one of the great opportunities that eclipses provide. And so when you hear about astronomers and solar physicists chasing eclipses, it's uh, not just about fun. It's actually about serious work where they put up spectroscopic observations and other kind of observations, uh, including now polarization observations to capture the magnetic fields of the corona. And then they, they, they throw these observations out to theorists and modelers like us who test our models during the eclipses. And you know we have done that uh, you know, quite successfully in the past as well. We also have now Professor Deepankar Banerjee. Uh, so Deepankar, uh, yes, yeah. So how was the eclipse from Nanital? <laughs> yeah, it's just right now it is clearing out. It was all cloudy and uh, just last few minutes it has uh, opened up now and people are all outside. I just have to come in. <laughs> so I just took some pictures. Uh, so the feed, of course, we were uh, all taking it from Hanley primarily. Um, uh, Aniket, I just sure, uh, you know, can you give me five minutes because there's a call from, uh, you know, uh, uh, All India Radio. Uh, and if you just give me five minutes, I will come back. Yeah. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Things in how are things in uh, Kolkata, Dipendu? Uh, so I, I, I mean, uh, I was earlier with uh, a Bengali news channel, Chobish Ghanta. Then in between, I my wife called me downstairs. So there was a break in the clouds, 
and we could see like just around noon i think that's when the, we had kind of a maximum uh, part of the partial eclipse that is from here so we did get to see it and and, and um, so jyotis patna was giving this live feed and they had representatives from very in various parts of bengal and i was very happy to see the enthusiasm of people so i think uh, uh, people in bengal are actually enjoying uh, enjoying this and যদি এখানে কোন বাঙালিরা এখন শুনছেন তাহলে আপনাদের স্বাগত জানাই এখানে নমস্কার আশা করি আপনারা ইক্লিপস দেখছেন এবং এখানে সমক আছে বাঙালি দীপঙ্কর আছে আশা করি আপনারা এখান থেকে কিছু সায়েন্টিফিক তথ্য বৈজ্ঞানিক তথ্য ইক্লিপস আপনারা জানতে পারবেন আজকে আনন্দ করুন ইক্লিপস এর মজা লুটুন এবং এবং সায়েন্স কে আগে বাড়ান Sorry, Anik, uh, I, I went uh, into a little loop in Bengali because, you know, hoping that there's some Bengali viewers. No, Dipendu, Dipendu, we are actually doing quite a lot of multilingual broadcasts here. I mean, Shokar, right. I mean, I mean, I mean, Shri Dhu Bangla, Kena, Marathi, we've talked about, we've yes. had many languages here covered, and we are going to uh, try to see how many languages we can cover today. I mean, this uh, is so Shokar, beautiful, yeah. right? I mean, in India, I mean, the diversity of India is, and, and diversity of people and the languages and, and our culture. Uh, and a, a phenomena such as this which is shared by everybody brings brings everybody together in spite of the differences and so wonderful to see and wonderful uh, uh, dipendu i wanted to point out samir and aniket uh, we i i would like everybody to go out if they are in and if if uh, the the sun is shining there and no clouds to look at the images of the eclipse under the trees because the leaves act as pinhole cameras and it is lovely out there people are taking pictures and putting it on social media and you can see if you go under a, a tree that has dense leaves and the space between the leaves act as pinhole camera you can see hundreds of eclipsed suns on the ground on the roads and it is lovely to see so if you are near a tree go and look at the eclipse on the ground tare zameen pe so our tara has zameen, zameen today i can share it Lovely. So we have very uh, uh, a, a stellar uh, range of uh, astronomers here, uh, both from solar physics and in general in astronomy. And we have three directors present uh, at this moment. So let let's uh, again uh, let's welcome, of course, uh, uh, the uh, Dr. Annapurni from uh, Indian Institute of Astrophysics, and also the Pankaj Banerjee will be finishing his call very soon. So he'll be with us sharing his experience from Nainital. um uh, maybe in that uh, moment uh, uh, dr anupurni could share what uh, uh, experience you had from hanley and kodaikanal and even bangalore yeah hi hi everyone so just completed the uh, crossed over the uh, uh, maximum in hanley so uh, we were watching from all uh, all sides so in the beginning we had uh, cloudy skies in bangalore and kodaikanal but hanley was very clear so hanley feed was uh, going on pretty and full stream and uh, in in actually what happens during for total solar eclipses all our campuses are very famous for uh, uh, pretty pictures of uh, sun and you know the eclipse etc so we have a, we normally have a lot of people visiting um, kodaikanal hanley and bangalore campus also the lawns will be full of activity and everything so with the situation we hardly had any one just a Uh, our own team setting up the instruments etc and the our auditorium was converted into our wall room where uh, we have the uh, all the uh, uh, feeds coming in and uh, etc so we're monitoring uh, kodaikanal and bangalore from here and uh, hanley was also coming in uh, kodaikanal uh, cleared a little uh, after some time and bangalore kept becoming cloudy but uh, hanley we had a very good stream and then it uh, completely it was clear and uh, except during near the maximum we had little bit of passing clouds were there but then everything uh, is okay and uh, uh, we don't have too many people in the campus because of this pandemic otherwise uh, excitement is virtual and every site we have about uh, five, between 500 to 3000 people watching the whole uh, web stream so coverage wise it's been very good but uh, you can't actually face to face feel the excitement and you know share the uh, joy of actually seeing the eclipses uh, minimal sorry uh, so 
I, I, that yeah. is something that uh, all the outreach groups are taking so much efforts from all institutes and trying to put out feeds for uh, everybody to see. Particularly in these times when we are uh, banned to go out from our houses, even. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's been uh, amazing. Uh, we've just experienced uh, annularity view from uh, two feeds, and uh, all of us had good goosebumps and were going wow and yeah. <laughs> uh, enjoying the moment. Uh, but however, I'll mention that Hanley has been, I think, the most popular feed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of the other people who promised feeds are running Hanley feeds. So we are at a lack of feeds. <laughs> <laughs> in that way. However, of course, the, the most special thing that we have here is all the uh, scientists who can put forward their views here on various aspects. Uh, in fact, I want to spring a question to uh, uh, those present. That are, the, 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 there have been some pictures taken uh, with a very uh, good cameras and good telescopes involved. So, um, <clears throat> shall, are, are we uh, also planning to do some analysis of those images and uh, maybe look at the lunar profile, limb profile or something like that? Or could it be a, uh, a project for college students, undergraduates, etc.? Yeah, so in our case, we have good pictures coming from Kodekanal. The resolutions are high because it's coming from the solar tower, tower telescope. The resolution is high. But then the coverage is the eclipse coverage is only about uh, 20, 30, less than 30 percent. So mm -hmm. you will not be able to see the rim of the sun or anything like that. So that is a high resolution picture where you can work on. But then the setup over here in Bangalore, as well as in Hanley, is not a high resolution picture. So we are not able to, I don't know how good the resolution will be to do any particular science with it. Uh, so that is the issue. The, the, uh, a, we wanted to send out, send across some uh, you know, good instruments from here to Hanley transfer so that we can actually set up them there. But then we could not even transport them. So the, the issues were there. So, you know. Because of that, uh, we, we could set up a, a, a structure to view it, but not of a science quality images could not be obtained. But IA otherwise is very well known for expeditions during uh, eclipses. We have carried out several expeditions for which even Deepankar was, uh, 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 I mean, he, he was a member of these teams. And so it is historically we have been carrying out experiments. So he's the uh, right person to speak more about the science which has been carried out. But we used to get cor uh, coronal images, you know, and also Dibyendu is there who would predict and model it and, you know, predict how the solar corona is going to view uh, during the eclipse. So they probably can say better. But I, right now, we our instrumental setup is not the optimal to perform detailed science uh, as such because uh, we haven't been able to go to this absolutely brilliant location with our instruments to set up because of the condition. Uh, let, let me bring back Neeraj. Uh, so Neeraj, uh, Professor Shomak uh, Rajudri earlier mentioned that there were, uh, uh, we, get, we will get very few opportunities in our lifetime to watch either total or analyst total eclipses from India. Uh, so, what can you tell uh, tell us about the future total or annual eclipses from India? Uh, yeah, thanks, Aniket. I just want to add to what uh, Shomak said uh, about not about the eclipse just being a shadow. Uh, you know, people say you know don't be afraid of your own shadow, and I think we should also stop being afraid of the moon shadow apart from our own. Uh, there'll be so India is not going to have many eclipses very soon. Unfortunately, this is going to be the last one for quite some time for the next. Uh, 10 or 11 years. The next solar eclipse which will be seen in India is going to be on May 21st, 2031, 11 years from now. And that will be an annular eclipse. The annular path will cut through uh, Kerala and Tamil Nadu like it did in December. And the rest of the country will see a partial eclipse. Uh, and then follow, that is in 2031. Three years after that, in 2034, on March 20th, there will be a solar eclipse. Uh, the totality will pass through like the northernmost parts of India. And the rest will see a uh, annular eclipse. The next proper total eclipse going through India is going to be in 2064. And so that's that's quite far away, actually. Uh, and therefore, for the next few years, uh, we will be reduced to seeing eclipses through live feeds uh, of other countries. And I think uh, and I think that's that's the next best thing. Uh, I just want to add to something uh, Dibendu had said about uh, scientific advances made in eclipses and he talked about you know advances made for science in terms of you know the theory of gravity or, or helium discovery 
I wanted to quickly add, if I may, uh, an important eclipse for outreach and for uh, and for uh, and uh, and for you know making modernity, modern astronomy consistent with older astronomy, right? So there was this famous astronomer called Raghunath Achari working in the Madras Observatory in the late 1800s, uh, with when it was under the British. And he came from a family of Panjang, Panjang makers, almanac makers, traditional Indian uh, almanacs, right? And he also knew modern astronomy where he was a trained astronomer. Uh, he then found that the tables used by traditional astronomers uh, in India were no longer accurate because the numbers they used were, were, no, were from observations long, long back. And so he had held huge debates with the almanac makers, Panjang makers saying, look, update your tables. We we'll provide you with uh, modern values for the tables. A lot of them refused. And the huge debate, which of course ultimately was settled, and and they did update the the tables of the Panjangs following him. But the way one of the ways he did it was very nice. Was he said, "Look, there's going to be a solar eclipse in 1868 and 1871, which will be seen in southern India." And he said, "Look, your predictions say that this is how the eclipse will look, and it will appear at this time." We say, based on these predictions, using modern values of of, of planetary positions, that it will occur at this time. And then he told the people, "Look, I'm telling the public at large." Not just astronomers, the public at large, just go out and verify for yourself with your own eyes which one is correct, right? And, and I think that's that's very interesting because it's it's one of the first times in modern history where, in modern Indian history, where uh, science was was kind of became part of the public domain and the public was public were were told that they could themselves verify uh, predictions uh, and, and 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 see which theory was right and which was wrong and so on. So I think that is something in, I wanted to mention, uh, which I thought was very interesting. Uh, but coming back to your question, yes. So, so this is going to be the last solar eclipse for the next eleven years, unfortunately, uh, and that's why this is very important. That's that's why you know having live feeds from across the the world is very interesting. I just I was just looking at the live feeds. Uh, the Abu Dhabi Abu Dhabi feed shows that the eclipse is just about over in the Middle East. Uh, the feed from Taiwan say shows that the eclipse is starting. The moon is just entering the sun's disk now in Taiwan, and the feeds from uh, you know, farther south, like Indonesia, Malaysia, they could just get to start, right? So, and we are right in the middle of it in India. So, yeah, that's interesting too. So, Dipankar, when, when, while you were away, uh, it was mentioned that you have uh, earlier la laid IA teams uh, which went to different places to st uh, study solar corona during eclipses. So, can you tell about these expeditions? Sure. So, but actually, I have few uh, you know, images which probably give a better uh, overview of this. So, if you can see my uh, screen, is it uh, visible? Oh, yeah, but, but you have to maximize yeah. the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My PowerPoint has uh, gone somewhere, so I have to bring that in. Yeah. So, are you able to see my uh, screen yes. now? Yes. Okay. So, there are two things I wanted to uh, highlight. Right. One was uh, since the Bindu was, uh, you know, there in the uh, in the panel, he didn't talk uh, much about his uh, own work and why we really, uh, you know, wait for the total solar eclipse, uh, you know, occasions and so on. One thing is, you know, sun is a you know magnetic star, and this uh, overall magnetic field structure of the corona, we do not have a very clear understanding. So this is called the global field of the of the corona at a large scale. And uh, some of these work actually at uh, it's happening at uh, SESI Kolkata. This is Iser Kolkata, and the Bindu is leading this uh, you know bunch of uh, young uh, uh, kids who are doing very uh, nice work. Which uh, what they do is they predict the you know solar eclipses image uh, how it will look before the eclipse uh, happens. So this is uh, nice because from our based on our theoretical understanding and observations in the previous day of uh, eclipse, they predict what would be the you know uh, picture of the global field. And uh, this is again another example of, of course, the, in the prediction, there are many people across the globe and uh, the Bindu is uh, one of the, uh, the many. And as you can see with this image uh, taken on 21st August 2017 eclipse and 2019 eclipse uh, and the theoretical predictions, how it was, if you flip flop, you see this. Uh, I just want to, because I'm getting this opportunity. So, uh, you know, again, say a few things about why people are scared about eclipses. I mean, what is... Uh, what is the history and why it is that, you know, we have to be so scared about it. I think it's just nothing but about darkness, you know. I mean, suddenly if you find that, you know, middle of the day, things are uh, getting so dark. So it's just, uh, you know, this attitude. So if you go back to the historical pictures and paintings, 
you will see that you know either somebody is eating the moon or somebody is eating the sun big demon or 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 you know some animals and even you know during the eclipses in the lower image what you see from national geographic is that people used to you know burn uh, certain objects so they put fire they will make a lot of noises to scare uh, you know this because it is it is something which is uh, you know unnatural so but you know the point is you know today in the modern day we know why eclipses uh, happen in in those times people didn't know why what is the real cause of the eclipse so this is i think a big message which need we need to do uh, thankfully you know and from since morning uh, i was in a zoom session and there were uh, you know more than 100 kids and i was continuously interacting with them i was eating uh, you know in front of them uh, having tea, tea coffee uh, and, and telling them you know how to look at the eclipse uh, how to make a pinhole camera and so on i think this is a very important uh, exercise we have to do and i'm i'm thankful for uh, you know as i for doing this so this is uh, my experience again uh, we are fortunate uh, to uh, be privileged to be able to travel to you know distant uh, locations with uh, big expeditions um uh, but of course we do some science out of this total eclipses as well uh, and so this is one example where we were a team from india led by professor jagdeep singh and uh, our former director uh, professor siraj hasan and i was uh, uh, somewhat younger at that time uh, you can see that group picture and we had two uh, you know 40 cm telescope we had a spectroscopic arrangement so this is what we observed in the in that so there is something called a, a you know red and green emission from the solar corona uh, this you can only see during a total solar eclipse in fact incidentally these experiments which we ran more than 10 years back actually gave us the confidence to build a coronagraph for space in fact the aditya l1 coronagraph is uh, going to have these two spectral lines as a main uh, you know source of observation so of course uh, we could only observe less than a minute of total solar eclipse when while uh, we were in china but then in uh, aditya l1 when we are there it, uh, at l1 location we will have these artificial uh, total eclipse conditions continuously for you know as long as we want at least for 5 years uh, that's the thing so that was way back in 2009 i didn't uh, talk about even earlier actually i was fortunate uh, one of the few who was flying with the indian air force aircraft in 1995 uh, from agra we flew out and we were a team of uh, you know five we were with the uh, with the uh with the air force uh, team and looking at the total solar eclipse so that was way back in 1995 and then uh, by 2010 just after the china eclipse i was again very fortunate to travel all across to uh, the other part of the globe this is called easter island almost middle of nowhere uh, no land uh, the nearest land uh, it takes about 4 hours to fly and this is a mystic island uh, and we were fortunate to go i think uh, shomokda was just mentioning that we are some of our crazy guys we we are also called eclipse chasers uh, but, you know we chase the eclipse because if you are in one location you won't uh, get to see many eclipses so really you have to travel across uh, and and see uh, you know these eclipses uh, this is the island which i was talking about uh, uh, quite a mysterious and historical island Uh, still people do not understand uh, you know this is more than 5000 years old these statues uh, which are there in those island how it came so the point is you know we we scientists are really really privileged uh, uh, you know in the name of science we, we, which of course excites us but it also gives us the opportunity to travel across the globe this was the team again for this ex eclipse expedition even the indian uh, ambassador from chile uh, he flew into this island to watch the eclipse uh, together with us so this was a very very exciting moment last year along with the two other panelists today uh, durgesh uh, uh, and and the bendu we were fortunate to travel to um, argentina um, uh, in july so this uh, movie is actually taken from uh, you know uh, at the other side from chile Uh, because there is observatory and so on so but it was a spectacular spectacular sight so this is uh, my real real experience uh, there is again a total solar eclipse uh, in the end of this year in december in argentina some of us were planning to go i think i'm i'm sure shomok uh, uh, there was also planning to go but i think under current circumstances it, it may not happen so uh, again it's just our excitement you know uh, when we really uh, enjoy what we do and that also allows us to uh, you know travel across and uh, share this uh, you know excitements with others
थैंक्स दीपांकर आई थिंक नाउ इट्स टाइम फॉर अवर रीजनल प्लग्स सो वी हैव सेवरल बेंगोली स्पीकर्स वी कैन स्टार्ट विद बेंगोली अ शॉर्ट प्लग अबाउट व्हाट वी हैव विटनेस सो फार इन इन बेंगोली एनी एनी वन कैन टेक एनी so yeah just yeah dibendu you want to go for that yeah sure i mean uh, uh, khanikon age in bangla te bollam abar bolte pari to mane pashchimbonge amra eclipse er je puro moja ta seta amra paini ei ei live feed e seta paoa gelo karon ekhane hanlet theke north india bibhinno jaygar theke amra dekhte palam ei annular eta jeta jeta khub ekta rare byapar jekhane chand surjer bhitor dikta theke dite pare kintu samne baiher dikare chotto rim देखते पेलें कि पश्चिम बंग कि पार्सियलिपनाइन आ बारिपिकार उटसाइड Yes, go ahead. Uh, so I uh, I was very pleasantly surprised uh, by the clouds parting because the uh, weather bureau had predicted cloudy weather here in Bengaluru where I am. Uh, so right at the moment, I'm uh, at a very uh, historical, geologically uh, significant place, namely Lal Bagh. I'm standing on the big rock. Uh, you can see the Kempegowda Gopra in the background. and uh, i'm watching the eclipse from here uh, it's of course uh, coming close to release to final contact um, there are a few friends around me uh, earlier in the day there were about 30 people uh, which is nice uh, but uh, it's also very sad because uh, bengaluru which is uh, meant to be uh, which uh, calls it Self, a modern city, an IT city, a science city. Before that, uh, in fact, we just celebrated the centenary of a sound. Last week, we celebrated his centenary, uh, and he was uh, a person who played a major. role uh, in uh, crafting bengal most nobody out everybody is in shops are closed restaurants are closed and everyone is huddled in uh, the media hungering in has been the dominant theme over the last uh, couple of days um, so that is insight but at, at the same time uh, there's a lot of uh, sadness and disappointment uh, at what is happening actually the disappointment uh, was in one way expected because we were expecting the weather to be bad but the weather has been extremely cooperative so uh, it's a beautiful sunny uh, day and i can still uh, see the eclipse uh, with, with my glasses um, but yeah uh, uh, we also uh, did our best to try and persuade people uh to use safety glasses and goggles otherwise to just stand next to a tree uh because sun is the sun is high uh in the sky so just stand next to a tree and watch the effects of the pinhole camera images on the ground uh before the eclipse and during the eclipse it's where 
where we see the beautiful crescent sun images. Did you have any questions? Aniket, you're muted. Can you hear me? Uh, yes. Uh, so, uh, did anyone have any questions? It's it's revealing to see uh, such a such a uh, state of uh, misinformation amongst the people where they are missing out on such a great site. And in fact, Bangalore is in between uh, the. I mean, it's getting a very similar phase uh, com uh, as compared to uh, December as well. So uh, it would have been amazing if people watched it uh, yes. that time and now also because following social distancing, but. Uh, that's a sad state. However, uh, we have been uh, accessible images over the internet to many, many uh, people, and uh, they have been asking excellent questions. If, if there's any kind of information that you may want to give in, let's say, in Canada to uh, the people who are watching, I appreciate that. Okay. Havamanate Tajnero, our Hediki Prakara, Bengaluru, Moda Kavikakito, Adre Moda Kavdila, Idek Shana, Yeldru, David to Bandu, E. Granada, Kone, Hansuana, David to Vixisi, Handa Surya, Namye Kanu and Tadu, Bahala, Prupa, Handa Surya, Bari, Grahana, Aguaga, Matra Kanu, Bari, Chandra, Surya Nige, Ada Baruaga, Matra Kanu today. Chandra wo akar dili namge samanya magi kaniste adre surya akar dili kaniso dila atyanta approve da drishya ido davitu yelru harak bani chana gide bislu mora golo aki achis sadibe yauda adru ondo mara idre bolle yele bittiro mara idre antha marthatra hogi nint koli inta ha ondo khanda surya da bimba golo nalad mele chelli ro dena nodi na davitu atwa Surya na bandu Kannada mula ka Surya na bimba bandu biri nodi akhanda Surya dakara esto apuru agi de adbhuta agi de anta. We have the khanda Surya akara uh, and we can see uh, still see uh, feeds from various other places uh, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it through your solar eclipse goggles although we couldn't really see anything much in Pune here. Uh, oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, here it's wonderful. In fact, it's better than what it was uh, during December. I wasn't here in December. I'd gone to the area of the totality, but uh, here in Bengaluru, it was uh, the weather didn't cooperate at all. Whereas today, uh, it's, it's just beautiful out here <laughs> right now. Right. Yeah, we all wish we could have been uh, outside and get some fresh breeze. Yeah. <laughs> Raining in Pune here. Yeah, but, uh, we do have have uh, some good feeds, and I think uh, in 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 the east uh, eastern countries we are having uh, annularities now. We're trying to get you the feeds right now. Thanks, uh, Prajal, for joining in uh, live from a uh, live location, not not just from your office. <laughs> yeah, good good to see yeah. Prajal actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thank you. So uh, lovely. Uh, we, we, I think uh, the, the uh, shadow uh, is now traveling more towards the eastern regions and it is, uh, uh, it is uh, just past uh, max time in uh, Kolkata and the eastern um, uh, seven sister states. So uh, we uh, have uh, some feeds, uh, Hanle is still showing a nice crescent and uh, hopefully we'll get some feeds from Taiwan and uh, later from Singapore and Japan which will show us uh, another crescent or uh, sorry another ring uh, well uh, crossing our fingers uh, we can uh, shift back to our other uh, experts uh, if there are anything special that you would like to say at this moment when we are crossing we have crossed over uh, the shadow has crossed over the length of india breadth of india Reaching the I, mean, I found uh, I found debunkers uh, presentation very very fascinating the work that was done with previous eclipses and we still have Dipendu and uh, Durgesh uh, on on here I would like them to also talk about uh, these experiments because uh, you were there in many of these experiments with Dipendu uh, I mean in uh, in South America for example and and so can you share a little more one of the things I found fascinating was of course um, Aditya L1 which we are going to launch next year. Um, uh, is going to have a perpetual eclipse for five years. 
Right. And uh, we are we are going to make an eclipse. We will make sure uh, Aditya Elwan does not eat or drink during that uh, five year eclipse. <laughs> but uh, but the fact that we are going to have this wonderful uh, event that is linked to the the picture Deepankar showed from um, the uh, the eclipse expedition in China. Um, do you have uh, talk a little bit more 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 about it? I think it was very. Yeah, I mean, so my my first eclipse was when I was seven years old, and this I I I don't really have a very good memory in general, but I I really remember this because this was this is 1980, I think, and yeah. and I grew up. I was born in then in Bihar, Jamshedpur. I I grew up. My childhood was spent in Orissa, and then I moved to Bengal. So I was in in Orissa then. I remember we went on a trip to Konar. and we saw that the total eclipse in 1980 from konarak and i have not forgotten that that that's i had this vague memory of something absolutely wondrous uh, and then i mean believe it or not the next total eclipse that i actually saw was last year in argentina and this was very special because by then you know i had become a scientist and, and a solar physicist uh, you know and the earlier one i was just a child and, and this was a wonderful opportunity because before we traveled to argentina we actually we actually you know modeled we we developed models for the the evolution of the magnetic structure of the corona and we we tested this model we made a prediction for for the eclipse and then we traveled to argentina dipankar was there durgesh was there and we actually observed uh, the eclipse and 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 much of our predictions actually also also came true and and this is like the development of scientific ideas and scientific theories is an ongoing process you don't necessarily get it right we are not magicians we, we are scientists and we learn from our mistakes and this eclipse has sort of provided us with an opportunity to to improve uh, our understanding and the science tweak our models to to tune it towards towards getting getting it right with the you know with the idea the eventual idea that when you do get it right we should be able to make forecast for the space environment which is important for for you know for for uh, protecting our satellite based assets like telecommunications gps navigational networks weather satellites which is you know which is uh, india's you know is is really dependent on right now but the eclipses only provide you with very rare and sparse opportunity to develop you know to develop your understanding and test this models so so one of the ideas of of the aditya Uh, L1 solar mission, which is India's first uh, satellite, uh, uh, which is going to be launched next year, in which many institutions like uh, IIA, uh, IUCA, PRL, SESI, uh, Azar Kolkata, uh, ISRO uh, uh, are involved in, is to actually continuously observe the corona, and the corona is is sort of the lower boundary of the solar system, and anything that goes on in the corona eventually determines the conditions of the solar system. Uh, and so this continuous observation of the sun sun's corona uh, through through for example the, the the one of the instruments which is the variable emission line coronagraph of which dipankar is the is the science uh, lead uh, so the idea is to to cover the 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 sun's uh, uh, surface with the artificial disk in front of the telescope so that you can continuously observe the the, the thin uh, 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 layer of the outer solar corona and from there we can make various observations we can make observations spectroscopic observations at the, the, the you know the waves the density profile the temperature of the sun's corona the velocity we can measure the velocities of the plasma the million degree plasma in the sun's corona we can also based on certain measurements uh, figure out how the magnetic structures form and evolve and give rise to this this massive solar storms uh, uh, which can impact uh, satellites which, which are orbiting earth So these are some of the fantastic opportunities that uh, that uh, that Aditya L1 satellite is going to present. And of course, Durgesh, who I don't see now, who is at Ayuka, is leading the development of the Solar Ultraviolet Imaging Telescope. Uh, this is also a very unique instrument um, in the sense that it will be imaging the sun in in uh, in uh, a certain range of ultraviolet wavelengths, which you do not necessarily which you do not get low down on Earth. You have to be outside the Earth's atmosphere because the Earth's upper atmosphere absorbs much of it. and because the earth's upper atmosphere absorbs much of this radiation it also plays a very important role in driving the upper atmospheric dynamics and the climate system uh, so so this very important instrument that's being built at iuka will also provide a long term measurement of 
uh, the, the ultraviolet radiation from the sun, which will play a very important role in feeding in, in, in climate models. And also, of course, it will also make another, you know, other other important observations. For example, the, the, the energy transfer and the dynamics in the lower uh, solar atmosphere. There are also instruments which are in situ instruments which will measure the properties of of space at the place where the satellite is located, which is uh, at Lagrange point L1, um, uh, somewhere uh, close to the Earth, but in, in the sun Earth line. Uh, and so, from from these measurements, we can figure out what space environmental conditions exist near Earth. Uh, and therefore, based on this, we can make forecasts for space weather. Uh, so this is a, a very important investment that India has made in this Aditya L1 solar satellite. And it's, it's amazing in the sense that, in, you know, in the foothills of the, of, 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 uh, in, in, along the same lines of the Astrosat satellite, Multiple different educational institutions are involved. And multiple students are involved in building the satellite. This is truly a national effort, and I think we are very proud to be associated with this. Uh, and I'm glad that you brought this up on, on the occasion of this very much. Thanks, Dibindu. I remember last year uh, during the, close to the, uh, in fact, during the uh, annual eclipse, we were in uh, Kerala actually doing a solar physics workshop there, and so many students showed uh, so much interest. And in general, the crowd, uh, the parents in the crowd were also asking how their children could uh, in the future uh, join solar or any kind of astrophysics. So I think uh, such events do have their good positive effect. And uh, also in these events, we should talk about the modern uh, uh, way we look at the sun. So thanks for sharing these details with us. And uh, Kerala reminds me that uh, Dr. Annapurni is from uh, Kerala. So uh, we, I have two requests to you. One is uh, maybe if you could say something about uh, eclipses in Malayalam, uh, since you're trying to make it as multilingual as possible. But other than that also, uh, since uh, you also sometimes work on uh, stars, so there's a question uh, from the internet uh, asking if such eclipses also happen, happen for other stars. So, uh, Dr. Anapuni, are you around uh, to answer this? Yeah, yeah I'm around, yeah. yeah. Hi, Samaria. Yeah, so just a few things on Malayalam for that matter. Um, uh, yeah. Malayalatil, I would say astronomy in the world, uh, uh, nighttime astronomy as well as daytime astronomy, as random prajaratil under. And Kutil, uh, school in the Kutil, college students, Eleven and Bangaramai to learn your interest to learn your And other good than awareness and the name of the And Akaina December, Kerala Til Kurdil districts, annular Kana Mairino. Padinda than you reward awareness and I know reward workshops and I don't know. Angane universities, colleges, Elan, then Nalon and support Jay and the area and astrophysics. Ayukada than a research centers on the Kuchin University than under Ella schoolum, college gulum, other prosa and under the and community item than a organized either a viewing Angantane Narthan under. Uh, 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 Ingat tu bijar orang lel pada ada kurang dalam itu progresif itu kanan nanda bade. An kuteolam studentsum college golam activitiesum nartu nanda eclipseum and also stars in the city. Then I mean that's all I have to say in for the Malayalam thing and for the star of course eclipses happen so it's wonderful we have stars which is like the sun is a single star but then you have Stars uh, are, uh, when they are born, they can also be born as uh, binaries. So one star going around the other. And in which case, what happens is if the two stars are in your plane, then obviously one has to go in front of the other, right? So those uh, systems definitely bring out eclipses. So they are called eclipsing binaries. 
So these eclipsing binaries have light curves, typical light curves, periodic lives, light curves are found. And many such systems are studied and which are very, very important to understand and measure the fundamental properties of uh, 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 the binaries. And they, they also help us to calibrate our mass radius relation, et cetera. So fundamental relations are also uh, uh, calibrated using the uh, eclipsing binary. So eclipsing binaries are definitely there and the eclipsing is part of it. You all actually get the both the eclipses, the big eclipse and the small eclipse. So detailed studies are definitely done using that. Let's answer your question, Samir. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, so there, there's Samir, there's... Can, I, can I bring in a different topic here? So I was looking at the comments. Please, please. Uh, and I think at some point in time, uh, when you did not have any women astronomers in this, in this in this um, uh, list of must have been a very little uh, time. <laughs> yes, there was a comment, and this comment was, "Why are there no women astronomers? Why are there no women scientists here?" So I think this is an important comment. We should not brush it under the carpet. Well, there are some right now. I think we should talk a little about what are the astronomy institutions. I mean, this is a problem in the sense that we 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 astronomers, physicists, we acknowledge that there are very few women uh, scientists in, in India. This is not just a problem in India. This is a problem, in, you know, in, in much of the world, including including in the U.S. By the way, about you know the numbers I'm aware of in the U.S. Um, but we are very conscious about it, and especially the Astronomical Society of India. I don't see Anupama, who is actually the president. Uh, she's a woman scientist. She's in fact the president of the Astronomical Society of India. I see her here today. But nonetheless, we are you know the Astronomical Society of India has a, a, a panel which is devoted to looking at these issues. And I try to address it in a way that we can encourage more women astronomers, women scientists to come up and take up the sciences. Uh, maybe you could discuss a little bit, maybe Shomak and Arnapunni, maybe even Priya, they can talk a little bit about their perspectives on how we, you know, we are dealing with this and moving forward. How are we encouraging diversity in, um, you know, in, in, in astronomy? Well, I mean, this is, uh, I think uh, um, I, you highlighted a very important point. I mean, just the, um, the, uh, the participation of um, some of the major uh, Indian uh, astronomers, uh, uh, women astronomers today in this webcast shows that, uh, uh, that there are leading women uh, in, in Indian astronomy. But I think in general, what has happened is that, I mean, we, we are uh, in India, the number of women who go into uh, uh, science in general, follows the, uh, the the trend in the world of uh, in physics we see worldwide 20 to 30 percent of students uh, in in universities uh, in in physics and mathematics departments higher much higher in biology uh, uh, we see uh, a progression in which uh, women there are fewer women in the uh, in, in in the faculty positions and, and in top directorial positions even fewer it happens all over the world and uh, this certainly is uh, something that we have to reverse. We have to bring in more opportunities uh, for women. And uh, um, just, just today, uh, you, you saw uh, some of the best participants in, in, in every way in, in this discussion uh, um, uh, just brought in the fact that uh, I think gender uh, should not be an issue in science, but it is. And uh, it, it's not just in science, in, in, in many other fields. And we have to uh, make sure uh, to find out, and this is what this group in ASI has done very well, uh, is to find out what the typical uh, problems are in uh, in uh, in the in the life of a, a girl, a, 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 a woman, uh, in uh, in coming into uh, sciences and staying in sciences till the very end, uh, and and uh, and and making it to the top, and and then to figure out whether we are doing enough to encourage people to come in. Uh, I think. Uh, an event like this is very good. Uh, if uh, and I, I see four or five thousand people watch today uh, this this uh, this webcast, uh, I'm sure uh, half of them are women, and and they should feel that um, <clears throat> the opportunities in science in general and education is there, are, are, are there um, for us uh, to uh, to encourage people to come into science. Thank you. Maybe Arnapurni, if you want to add your own perspectives uh, to that, that would be nice actually for for whoever is listening. Um, yeah, so thank you uh, for, uh, yeah, this is definitely an important point. And uh, uh, as a woman, it is uh, not so easy to rise up in any career for that matter, and particularly in STEM. 
and uh, there is definitely a kind of a feel or some complex at some point developing in that am i good enough so that should not be there at all so if when you are even writing an entrance exam to any uh, any kind of courses you feel that oh maybe boys would do better than me so no definitely not the girls are definitely good so the complex should not be there the girls have to also feel that what you i can definitely do it kind of a thing and second uh, i mean uh, recent years you can definitely see more and more number of uh, girls coming into even engineering education iits the fraction of two, uh, girls are still much less in any courses like that and even if you look at uh, 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 um, um, mathematics still we we'll have to push i mean people have to more uh, fraction has to increase definitely over there and uh, that is to even into the getting into the stream and then second sustaining uh, your presence in that field requires a lot of support from the family also because many things come in your way so as when uh, you pass out of your post graduation the parents start thinking about marriage more than the fact that how will i make my kid or a daughter get into a phd or a science career more than that the thinking is coming from how do you get married and of course social pressure is there that, that question keeps coming oh my god your daughter is not married so marriage becomes the you know the priority i mean when compared to continuation of the education in many cases you have to literally fight with the family saying that no i want to continue my studies i don't want to get married so that is a definitely a social awareness has to be there marriage comes only when a person is ready for it not because society decides that a person should get married so that is a difficult thing and of course i mean I, that's not a something bad for a person to happen you can definitely get married but the problem is that you uh, additional responsibilities additional division of time against people starts so in order to uh, you know to have a focused uh 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 you know dedicated time to do research or dedicated to time to do uh, uh solve a problem chase up uh, you know your passion it you have limited time because that time you everybody has 24 hours a day so you have to slice that time you have a, against different priorities and you cannot deprive someone of your attention who is literally asking for your attention so it becomes a overwhelming task on the person to carefully discipline yourself to make sure that you take up a, a problem and address it and complete it but all that i can tell you is that people who somehow wait through that and become uh, 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 you know get married you have family or to look after your parents in law your your own parents your kids everybody together so you get more and more disciplined at it you are you are focused you are fighting and you your 24 hours is split into too many slices which you know partition according to whatever is the need so you have only one so small partition for yourself to do research and unless and until your discipline and focus that never gets done so if you look at people who have been able to do all this way through this thing the the strength or the people the, the women who go through this and come out it's it's a, actually a quite a bit of a uh, you know struggle but yeah. then without focus and without discipline this, this doesn't get done it's a huge amount of uh, uh, you know discipline yourself to get it done and second thing is you might have to stop many things which you wanted to do otherwise you can't you just don't have time so focus on whatever you know the, the most important thing and get it done so uh for a person for a woman to so uh, attend to so many things and still do it is because at home priority will be that oh my god my my favorite dish is not made mm -hmm. or someone will come and say that oh my god how is your house looking like this for that person the priority is that for for uh, uh, a woman who's handling multiple things nobody looks at that so mm -hmm. that's very strange society does not understand that so Uh, somebody to wade through this is not very easy and at many points you will think that oh my god why am i struggling with so many things so no is not the answer don't stop it don't stop it and let other people who are asking for share let them know what is your passion 
and tell them that look i will give you a little less time than what you actually are demanding because i want to take that bit of small part to do what i want to do and when you please be happy because you i also need to be happy i also want to do it so share the excitement make them also feel that you know i want to do this because i am passionate about it just and okay. i am also letting you do whatever you are passionate about it so why don't you let me also do what i am passionate about so you have to share the excitement let them think that yes that person also needs time and dedication and uh, so it's like a game but then you have to take everybody along it's not you cannot stop your um, personal life because you're doing research everything has to go together it's a package deal okay thank you yeah, thank you so, anupurni for, for you sharing this yeah. yeah so i mean so, i think anupurni says the challenges that a women scientist faces are, are probably somewhat more than 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 a man faces and a man faces and this is something that is not nice and we should be all all aware of this in terms of providing an equal opportunity to everybody i don't know that priya has anything to add yeah yeah sure 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 okay, this sure. is something I mean, we all like to talk about and uh, yeah, okay. uh, yeah so i uh, even when the sessions uh, thanks dipendra for bringing out this topic this is an important one and uh, when the thing started in the in the, in the beginning itself i noticed that yes the number of females on this was very very little and uh, probably we should have uh, you know on behalf of poic we should have been careful to see to it that there was a balance but you know it was slightly this thing uh, but yeah i would say that the problem is a threefold problem the first problem is the initiation problem in the sense the uh, the psycho the the social problem that people think that girls can't do physics and maths and hence they don't initiate girls into physics and maths or astronomy for that matter and so that's the initiation problem the other problem is after the girl goes through it right she you know she still says she likes it she does it then what happens is that then they they comes up with the challenges right so if you have a student a boy with the same kind of challenges he's not going to face these kind of challenges he's not going to prove how well he does time management and home management and all these managements the girl has to all the time prove that she's going to be doing all that right and uh, uh, often uh, i i always try to uh, do this that you know a lot of girls are given the idea that if you want to be a true professional then you cannot get married you cannot have children you know you have to sacrifice and uh, it's it really good that today the ones the, the women we had on the panel whether it's annapurni or prajwal or harvinder or even me all of us are mothers right so it's not that uh, girls have to be told that you have to sacrifice you know motherhood or a personal life just because for the cause of science right a balance is possible and i think the the most uh, positive message that can be given to girls are role models right if girls actually see other women who are managing it right then they realize that you know it's not such a big deal yeah xyz has managed it so what's the big deal i do not need to sacrifice everything so that i get it i can still have it all right so i think uh, as we are building up this uh, you know set of role models which we have even in the indian astronomy community uh, i think that's a very positive message that's going out to girls because they can actually see women who are actually doing it i agree also with uh, what adapurni said that for women it's a tough deal because they have to prove that in spite of everything they will you know squeeze out the time etc and do it while a man need not be so uh, disciplined right because he doesn't have to do this kind of balance so that it's so agreed it's a much tougher job for women but there is hope and uh, like i said the role models are the uh, the message that we can give to the younger generation that it's you know it's all very doable so i think that's what's important yeah thanks thank you, thank, thank you priya i think it's a difficult topic to bring up but i think it's yeah. important that with so many listeners i think we we talk about difficult topics so we can acknowledge the problem and, and address it Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Samir, for veering off, but I think uh, you can now take over and, and take us to the rest of the eclipse. Uh, uh, thank you. Everybody. Uh, one of the highlights of uh, this webcast, so it's it's not just aimed just to show people an eclipse; it's also to inspire uh, people to join science, uh, people of all ages, genders. etc to join science uh, or at least develop a scientific mentality and uh, these problems need to be highlighted as well because that's what science does it it shows off its own problems its own uh, faults etc and then it gets rid of them so uh, rather than hiding uh, things uh, yeah.
any other <laughs> uh, fields. So uh, I, I think that that's been uh, really enlightening and all the, I can see a lot of comments uh, also thanking us for this discussion. Uh, hopefully this has been inspiring to boys as well as girls, especially with uh, uh, lady astronomers joining in this uh, discussion later. Because I'll just take a moment to say that uh, there was no bias in choosing uh, <laughs> lady astronomers. It was only a matter of how, uh, what time they were available. And therefore, uh, you might have found a little while when there were <laughs> no ladies on the screen. Anyway, so I, I draw your attention back to the, to the eclipse. And uh, as Neeraj had been uh, uh, telling us that uh, the eclipse is being seen uh, uh, over a large part of the world and <clears throat> In the east, uh, in the um, in the African region, it has it has been over for a while now. India is just about to in India, it's just about to go uh, out. Uh, the, the moon is go, just about to go out from the sun's limb, and uh, you can see the feed <coughs> at top. I Hanle continues to be our best feed today, uh, where <coughs> only a slight part of the sun is hidden. However, we have feeds from China and Taipei in Taiwan where uh, we have two lovely feeds, both showing a lovely crescent sun. And uh, both of them uh, are going to hopefully become, uh, come close to the annularity very soon. So we'll keep looking at that. Uh, in, uh, of course, in India, the feed will end about uh, 20, 25 minutes from now when the moon is completely uh, out of the sun's face. And uh, we'll have the, uh, eclipse over. So we have some time uh, for discussions to continue. And uh, if, if, uh, I think Neeraj has something to say about eclipses uh, being used uh, and, and, and something about an eclipse on Mars. So Neeraj, can I get you back here? Uh, yeah, I think my video is off. You may need to turn it on again. Oh, okay. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, so thanks, thanks everybody in the panel for bringing up the issue of gender. I think it's very important and very happy we had this discussion. And it's not just gender. We want astronomy and all of sciences to be accessible to everybody, which is also why we have multilingual uh, talks today. We want we want diversity and and equity, not just in gender, but also you know in 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 caste and class and reach in 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 language and so on. And I think uh, you know I think we heard some really awesome stuff today about it. Uh, to go back to what uh, Anaponi Subramaniam had said earlier about eclipses and other stars, uh, I also want to kind of tell people about eclipses within the solar system itself. Uh, there are some beautiful videos taken by satellites, our own satellites in space, of the solar eclipse uh, in in both directions. What I mean is there's some amazing videos of of satellites which are which are imaging the the Earth. And you can see this, this, uh, you know, this fuzzy shadow of the moon going across the Earth's surface, taken from space, and it's just amazing. So please do go search for it online. There are quite a few of them. Uh, but then there are also videos taken by solar telescopes in space, like Hynod and so on, which actually look at the sun uh, and then photograph the solar eclipse, and, and that's just completely different from how it looks like to us. And 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 those are, I think, those are two very different views of the solar eclipse from what we used to. I think people should go Google them and find out. Uh, but I also wanted, I also recently discovered, I thought it was fantastic, that uh, we have we have a tiny little uh, uh, car or a vehicle on Mars called uh, Curiosity Rover, uh, launched by NASA long back. And, Curios and Mars has satellites going around it. Like we have the moon, it has two satellites, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos is a bit bigger than Deimos. And uh, Curiosity rover actually has taken images of Phobos eclipsing not completely the sun, but a large part of the sun as seen from Mars. And there's some time lapse videos you can see online. So I thought that's really cool that not only do we know eclipses uh, from Earth's surface, we, we, we have seen eclipses from space uh, of the Earth or falling on the Earth, but we also now have a video of a solar eclipse from the moon of by its own satellite. I think it's really cool, you know, so, so from the Mars, sorry, from Mars uh, of, of by its own satellite. I thought, I thought people should go see that as well. Thanks, uh, Neeraj. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I think the people who missed, uh, you will mention again that eclipses happen with many planet and satellite systems. Uh, so sometimes the uh, uh, the satellite is quite big as compared to the uh, size of uh, apparent size of sun from the planet. So you see total eclipses. 
Sometimes satellites are quite small as compared to the apparent size. So you can see partial eclipses and annular eclipses, but not total eclipses in those cases. Earth moon is a unique system where we are able to see both total eclipses as well as annual eclipses. The size of lunar disk as we see from Earth and size of solar disk as we see from Earth, they are just almost similar. So with a slight variation in moon's orbit, uh, orbital uh, distance from uh, Earth, we can see both the phenomena uh, from Earth. Yeah, and I, and I think one thing to realize is that uh, it's not just during an eclipse that the shadows uh, happen, right? Uh, all objects on, uh, on in, the, in the solar system uh, shine by sunlight, reflected off them. And therefore, all bodies in the solar system have their shadows traveling behind them all the time, right? It's not as if the shadow of the moon exists only during a solar eclipse. The shadow of the moon goes behind the moon all the time. The shadow of the Earth goes behind the Earth all the time as they go around the sun, right? And sometimes the shadows fall on each other's bodies, each, each other, each, other objects as well on, fall on each other. And that's when you have eclipses. You know, we've been looking at, for example, it's been for hundreds of years, we've been seeing the shadows of Jupiter satellites fall on Jupiter, for example, right? And in fact, you know, there was a famous experiment where the timing of these eclipses of, of, uh, of on Jupiter by its own satellites uh, led Romer to derive the speed of light very accurately, right? And, and therefore, these shadows, Every sh every body in the solar system has its shadow, which goes around it all, goes along with it all the time. You can't escape your own shadow, like like people say. And these shadows sometimes fall on other objects. That's pretty much it. It's nothing more than that. But when it does occur, and you're, and you're in the shadow, it makes for an amazing, beautiful sight, like we are seeing right now. In fact, uh, it might be a good uh, thing to imagine how uh, things would look like on the moon. Uh, suppose you are on a, on a on the moon on a lunar eclipse, and that then we would have a total eclipse of the sun by the Earth, which would be actually quite a spectacular event. Uh, but we are lucky that we have the moon, which can cover the sun hundred percent, and for a, for quite a bit most of the time. Today, of course, we had uh, only the annular eclipse in which a slight ring was seen. Uh, now in, in China, we we see that uh, the <clears throat> moon is almost about to cover the sun and uh, we may uh, want to keep looking at that field. Uh, while waiting for it, of course, I mean, uh, we have uh, so many scientists here who also uh, guide a lot of uh, students here. So uh, while uh, he's here, may I ask uh, Deepankar, uh, Deepankar to maybe uh, say something about uh, careers in astrophysics or solar physics uh, since it is your speciality. Yeah, yeah, lots sure. of just listening in. So yeah, yeah, then, yeah, yeah. Sure. sure. Thank you very much. So I think uh, you, you know this is very import, important uh, subject area. You know how to attract the most bright students for uh, generally for research and then that too for astrophysics because astrophysics is not taught in uh, you know in in an undergraduate or postgraduate studies that much. But that's not actually too much required as well because astrophysics is not a very different branch of uh, physics. It is a application of physics only. So uh, only thing the awareness about the possibilities of different institutions and uh, different kind of research programs in that, of course, you know, solar physics is the branch which I uh, work and the Bindu is also online. We have been, you know, attracted to uh, uh, quite early. But having said that, you know, when I joined the PhD program, I had no uh, knowledge about uh, the sky or for the sun at all. Somehow, after doing the first year coursework and so on and so forth, you know, uh, uh, we felt, uh, some of us felt that, you know, solar physics is a good branch to, you know, verify some of your knowledge of physics. So um, there are now opportunities within India. Of course, uh, Ayuka leads uh, 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 this information uh, to the different university sector, being a university nodal center. And uh, some of us who are there in somewhat isolated uh, research center, uh, we take this as a uh, big responsibility to let others uh, know that such opportunities exist. Uh, in a way, uh, you know, what you have organized today, uh, thanks to Astronomical Society of India, and I, I must thank actually Niraj, uh, who was the first uh, driver of this uh, program. And now uh, you are, uh, Samir and Aniket, you are uh, taking the, you know, uh, baton forward. Uh, these are very important avenue as well. So uh, through your platform, uh, the public outreach and education. So this is a this is an integrated program. Actually, uh, we could now reach to uh, youngsters, and there are uh, many research institutes within the country. 
uh, who offers a PhD program. There are certain institutes who offer also integrated PhD programs, and uh, they're all you know uh, Mr. Mr. available. So Mr. that Mr. I think it's Second a good department. opportunity. Having yeah. annularity in in uh, China in the China field. So this all right, okay. This just. Uh, I wanted to point uh, that out to people. It's being made full screen now, of course. Uh, and please enjoy that. Yeah, yeah. I will just um, go so out and see the last phase of the eclipse from uh, outside. So we are still having a last phase uh, now. From yes, 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 of course, of course. And Samir, I have to unfortunately leave now because I have another engagement. So I, I wanted to say bye to you and to all of you, you and Aniket, who particularly put in a Neeraj, put in this effort to, to do this. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to all of you and uh, you know i mean i hope that uh, we've been able to reach out in a in a way that we you know, provide some excitement of what we are involved in about sciences to the general public uh, and i hope that some of these people who have been listening to us today at some point in time will come visit right. our institutions uh, iuka does a fantastic job of outreach uh, just so we, are, we are like we are going into the annularity ring yeah. right now in, in china so, right. so yeah bye <laughs> Right, uh, and and uh, we can actually see the moon slowly moving across the sun. It's it's an amazing sight. Uh, let's let's all enjoy, and then you leave. <laughs> we won't let you go before that. Yeah, because it's it's not it's not often that I think we can actually see you know something in the sky moving uh, yes. which we can perceive directly, right? And now for the next two three minutes, you can actually you can visualize the moon actually moving in the sky, and I think that's amazing. That's that's very special. Right. We we only know it, it moves thirteen day, degrees in a day, but this is this is the real thing. This is yeah. the, so, so if you look at the sky now, and maybe after an hour or two hours, you can see things that moved. You no know, sun has moved, stars have moved, but right. to to actually perceive directly the motion, you know, uh, every you know every few seconds is is very rare, and this is probably the only way we can actually do that. And I think that's that's brilliant. Now it's a perfect. It's a perfect thing. The edge is coming. Uh, edge of the moon is coming close to the edge of the sun. Lovely capture and, and a very good capture. And we may happen to see the Bailey's beads. Some so we've seen the annular eclipse now three times so far. <laughs> Four actually. Uh, and maybe we'll do one more in Taiwan after after a little bit. It's absolutely fantastic. This this feed from uh, from China. Wow, breathtaking! Just waiting for the baby's beads. There you go. Just a tiny bit of the sun now remaining till the third contact, and there it is. Okay, so the moon has passed across the sun's uh, little face, and this is the biggest crescent that you will see in the sky. <laughs> This gives us the correct uh, <clears throat> reason why we call it annular. Annular means a ring, uh, ring of, let's say, fire, or we could, as uh, solar physicists say, a ring of fusion that we are seeing out there uh, on the uh, of the sun's face, uh, hidden by the hidden by our own satellite, the moon, which is by coincidence about 400 times smaller than the sun, while it is also 400 times closer than the sun to us. So this ratio puts it at the perfect place to let us see this amazing sight in the sky. And the eclipses uh, do happen often. And uh, you know that there was an uh, annular eclipse seen from India in December. And uh, you're seeing one right now. <clears throat> but uh, other than that, this month itself has had three uh, eclipses, two lunar and one solar. And this is more because uh, the sun and the moon and the earth need to be aligned in proper uh, in a proper line, uh, and that happens only during certain periods when the orbital plane of the moon coincides with the orbital plane of the earth around the sun. So this is what we are seeing happening right now. The this is this is moon at the node where the 
plane of the moon's orbit cuts the earth's orbit around the sun and we've just seen the result of that lovely coincidence uh, happening here a uh, annulus an annular solar eclipse has just been witnessed and we've through this feed witnessed it so many times so <laughs> i i can't feel uh, far more uh, exhilarated by any other uh, thing on the internet now i think there's uh, one more one more annular eclipse coming from taiwan soon <laughs> So I uh, I was seeing a lovely picture uh, I I don't I forget which year uh, there was a picture I think from the US a few years ago uh, where a partial eclipse like this was the sun was rising as a partial eclipse and the photograph was taken from a highway in the middle of nowhere right and then you could get these horns you get these horn like partial eclipse rising up and it was just beautiful <laughs> yes so astrophotography is a, is a is a something you can revel in especially during eclipses because it's an unearthly sight and if it's particularly happening close to the horizon you can get amazing uh, you know zoomed in shots of the sun moon uh, combined with earthly sight <laughs> well yes it's it's actually an only <laughs> earthly sight right <laughs> <That's great. laughs> right any reactions uh, Was it right, Chaudhary? No, great. I mean, as I, I, I was looking through social media right now for people uh, posting pictures of uh, their their experiences. It's absolutely amazing and overwhelming, and I love the way. I mean, as as Neeraj also said before, that he's sitting in South Africa, I'm sitting here in in Pune, and we are watching the same eclipse uh, progress all through um, the world, which is not where we are. and uh, through the, um, the social media we can we can see all this this is absolutely fantastic and waiting for the taiwan view but people doing things in very creative ways looking at uh, taking pictures um, both through the internet as well as going out if you look at um, astrophotography you talked about people as i said uh, doing various innovative things with pinhole cameras i told earlier about how you can use uh, the the gaps between the leaves on the on the uh, on on the ground and people producing wonderful pictures of them here in ayuka we have a dome in which we have these holes that represent stars and those pin holes in the dome have produced lovely um, crescent sun images on on the ground uh, and uh, we just uh, just looking at uh, the uh, pictures from uh, dorje angchuk from hanle um, uh, not just producing this lovely feed but he's produced these lovely pictures of creatively uh, crafted masks of pinholes and uh, and then uh, have pro- uh, projecting pictures of those on the ground lovely lovely wonderful uh, so this is social media is is just full instagram you will just see how many pictures are coming of people's own experiences and this is where you know i mean we are talking of 1980 somebody said here that they were not allowed i mean neeraj said and other people said we're not allowed to go out to watch this this is not just in india all over the world people were afraid of of watching eclipses now if your mother doesn't want to <laughs> want to uh, let you go out of the house switch on the internet you can watch the eclipse and uh, i just was on a tv channel uh, fighting with an astrologer and a tantric who were saying that pregnant women should not watch the eclipse i said what do they do at night when you have a shadow of the earth right so <laughs> you know this this is the kind of thing so these things bring us bring the uh, the universe into our lives Uh, on these rare occasions and i love that i love the fact that people are engaging with the sun and the moon and the universe right now that's 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 the best thing here and as you mentioned that uh, we are watching from different continents and we are getting feeds from different continents the international astronomical union theme under one sky okay under really sky. Be, yeah. uh, comes alive in such moments anika i want to wanted to also one mention one quick thing before i go and that is you know i mean it it's uh, eclipses are featured in literature quite a lot i mean you and i can think of our favorite stories or uh, i mean the famous tintin of course uh, prisoner of the sun when tintin uh, you know gets off because he knows exactly when the eclipse is that is taken essentially from a mark twain uh, um, uh, uh, novel called uh, you know connecticut yankee in king arthur's court where the same thing happens if you know when so eclipses play wonderful you know in 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 fiction as well uh, in in our myths uh, i i was thinking about uh, uh, whether we have uh, we remember uh, incidences like the eclipse from the mahabharata where uh, you know when jayadratha dies for example the sun is eclipsed probably 
And wonderful thing was we saw an eclipse from Kurukshetra today, right? So, <laughs> and, and so think of, think of the connections between a possible uh, solar eclipse that happened probably during the Kurukshetra war. And today. so the, it's, it's in, it, eclipses are in, in, our, in our lives, in our, in our myths, in our fiction, in our, uh, in, our, uh, in our stories, in our tales. And this is when people go out on occasions like this and actually experience the real thing. And I think it's much larger than life, much larger than um, you know, um, what we do uh, as scientists uh, studying these things. It just connects people to, to these events. Yeah, I just wanted to point out that uh, this, uh, uh, I, this feed also helped us to uh, see how the image was changing from the Western part, you know, it went on to the, we had, uh, 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 you know, almost close to uh, annular eclipse in Hanley and then moved on. And then it, it as soon as the time changes, it moved on to the East. So it's not like the, uh, uh, it's happening it, throughout the region at the same time. So you can see the progression and you can see that as, uh, as in when the uh, angle, when the earth is rotating, so different parts get the uh, umbra. So that is when you have the eclipse happening. So uh, we understand, I mean, if you think about why it is happening, it's also a, re, uh, a particular occasion to uh, analyze why this is happening. So, so in real terms, where are these, uh, uh, bodies located, you know, what are their dynamics makes it happen. So everyone has to be more curious to understand why, why, why is it happening? So here in this demonstration itself, we saw that we had uh, close to totality at different regions at different times. So uh, I, I really urge people to think more on various aspects of so it. I also wanted to add in this that um, it is great that uh, we could make such uh, progress right right now uh, that we can predict eclipses to great accuracy. We know exactly when they will happen, where they will happen. Uh, in fact, you can go to uh, some websites which even give the predictions for hundreds of years uh, from today. right? Um, and so this tells us how um, how we have we have been able to understand this physical phenomena, understand all the parameters that are required in order to even predict what is going to happen in the future. Right, and uh, I'll just draw your attention to uh, with this to the feeds on the uh, from the various places that we have. Uh, we had our good luck to see the Chinese. Uh, the annular ring right now. Uh, the one at the bottom from uh, Taipan is not going to be annular. And so it has just passed its uh, maximum phase. It's going to be a nice crescent, but it's uh, too south to be uh, an annular eclipse. At the Hanley feed, you can see that the moon is slowly, slowly just going off the face. So that's kind of bringing us close to the end of this uh, lovely session which has uh, seen all of you participating with such <coughs> enthusiasm and sharing with the uh, viewers and uh, maybe their families who are also watching along uh, the, the, the minute aspects and the uh, important uh, learnings from the eclipses. So uh, I, we, could, we could just wait a little bit more. And uh, maybe I could ask uh, any of you if you want to point out any particular uh, uh, astronomical event other than an eclipse, which uh, you would like people to see and which is coming up uh, in, in the near future. So, I mean, Venus and Mercury transits are uh, beautiful as well, right? Uh, I need to check when it's going to come uh, next. Not Venus transit, but yes. is, Venus is not going to come near future, but uh, lifetime. Right, right, right. Yeah, but <laughs> no, these are beautiful. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> these are one of the uh, amazing phenomena that you can see uh, when the disk of these planets it moves on top of the sun. Um, but eclipses of, uh, of the moons uh, of Jupiter, right? Uh, those are really beautiful. Like if you have a, even a six inch telescope, uh, Ayuka has all these programs where you can actually grind your own telescopes. Um, and so if you have a six inch telescope, so I have done it myself as well. 
uh, you can look at Jupiter, and if you are looking at it at the right time, then you can see the uh, the shadow of a moon sliding around the disk of Jupiter as well. So right now you cannot get a view of how it would be looking for someone from uh, outside, so someone in space and looking on the Earth, how the shadow of the moon uh, is moving yeah. around the Earth. Wow. Uh, but you can see something like this uh, if you are going to look at. Uh, the eclipse phenomena yeah, happening for the Jupiter and its moon. That's a full term. That's where we We have the uh, last contact at Hanley. The moon has exited the solar disk. Yeah, I just wanted to add that you can see a clear sun, no spots. The sun is <laughs> not at all active now, so it's very quiet sun. And uh, this full disk is very so clean. No blemishes. Amazing that uh, that our viewers uh, w watched the entire Hanley feed from the beginning to the end, and uh, um, it, it's been wonderful there. I think there were no clouds at all. You, there were there were a couple of minutes, some um, close to the uh, maximum, like a few minutes. There were some passing clouds. Beyond that, I mean, besides that, there is there was uh, it was quite clear, and also the feed didn't break, so that's also very good. So we thank you for getting us this feed from the one of the best places in India to do astronomy research from, in fact. Yeah, and we also have a very strong team. They're very motivated team. So that really makes a difference. Right. So we really appreciate all the efforts that everybody has put into making these feeds possible for everybody to see and enjoy from the, their homes, uh, not just because of superstitions, but because of this particular uh, the, the ailment that has been going around these days. People have been at home and getting frustrated because there's hardly anything new happening. And they want to go out. But uh, yes, we, we could bring this to their houses, the, to their homes. They have also been participating in various activities that they themselves can do while uh, they are listening to us. So they've projected things, uh, projected the uh, images of the sun onto their walls, onto their corners of their houses. Uh, through their windows or to other people's houses, maybe. And uh, they've used uh, sieves and other things to see these beautiful, uh, you know, shapes made out of small, small crescents. So it's been a, it's been a great experience and everybody had fun. Uh, we've had around 5,000 uh, viewers uh, at the peak of this. And that's uh, probably just, uh, you know, if we add all the other people who are watching with them, that would be a much higher number. So this has been a relatively... Uh, successful feed and I also have two uh, team members Ishan and Atharva who are working in the background you know combining all these feeds and getting uh, all these things uh, correctly placed etc on the feed so I thank them as well uh, they are part of the Ayuka science popularization team we also have a group of other team members who are working online who are constantly uh, answering questions they are from the Ayuka SciPop team as well as from the uh, Astronomical Society of India's POEC team so uh, it's it's been a great effort, and uh, I I know it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, slightly sad that we we all wish to go to the uh, annularity belt and see it for ourselves, but then we did experience it three four times uh, on this field. So that's I think good enough for now. And uh, I would of course <clears throat> like to thank everyone for uh, taking out their time, enjoying this with us, being here for so long, and uh, also for sharing some and snacks with us <laughs> while you were here uh, that's perfectly okay to do and uh, now we are all probably uh, looking to go for lunch <laughs> so with that and if there are any other final comments uh, i would uh, like to slowly bring this uh, session to an end uh, aniket uh, you have uh, final words and others also are welcome to say something Th thanks to everybody all the pa panelists who uh, uh, took out time on a Sunday morning to uh, spend this uh, time with us and, uh, and also answer various questions from the audience. Uh, so it is uh, not just one institute or two institutes, it's a multi-institutional effort. You can see participation from many, many different institutes and across the country, different parts of the country. So our Indian astrof astronomy community always works together on such projects and uh, we would continue to doing so, so in the future as well. Yeah, I also would like to thank the IAA uh, outreach team and uh, you know teams at various field stations to bring in all the feeds. And it was like uh, the control room in the auditorium to bring everything and make sure that things work. So yeah. 
Thanks very much. Thanks, Aniket and Samir for, for hosting this all together. And, and Priya, yeah, it was very yeah, nice. Uh, and... uh, it's wonderful. And the entire team, Neeraj, wonderful idea. And I think this gives us a template for how we can do such things in the future, bringing in people from all over the country. And, uh, and uh, in various uh, stages, we can do all day events if you want on, uh, on, on, su on such occasions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, everyone. Thank, thanks, Thank thanks everybody, for organizing it. I know a lot of work went into the background. I know, like Samir mentioned, people whose faces we're not seeing were sitting at the back making sure all this is, all this is possible. So thanks, everybody. And also, you know, uh, we like doing this because, uh, you know, people uh, give back uh, our enthusiasm hundredfold, right? And, and like Samir mentioned, there are thousands of people who are online and looking at, I've been looking at the comments all along. And, and there's a lot of enthusiasm and interest from the people watching it for about what we did. And also they want to know more, right? And it is that enthusiasm and interest from the people who like what we're doing that, that wants us to, you know, that makes us want to do many more such events. So, you know, we kind of hopefully feed off each other's uh, excitement about this. Because eclipses are, are, after all, you know, astronomers can study eclipses historically, but eclipses are for the people, it's for everybody. Not just scientists, it's for the public at large. And it's, 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 it's a grand, it's it's a grand global science festival. Every eclipse is a global global science festival, and I think I'm very happy to be a part of it. Thanks. It's a audience. biannual festival, so you can continue <laughs> doing it. <laughs> like all festivals, it will come again. Yeah. Also, like the multilingual aspect of today's program, I think we I don't know we covered about ten languages or so. Um, yeah. So that that was that was a really good thing. To do. Very good. And thanks, Suruth. That was fantastic. Well, I also hope that uh, this actually helps to inspire many of these students. Uh, who may be listening in and also their parents to get their kids into astronomy and we'll be very very happy to welcome um, both uh, male female uh, all sorts of castes and creeds everyone into astronomy this is a unifying field um, and uh, we want to see you uh, come up and to study astronomy do research in all these institutes and to join us as panelists uh, in the next eclipse at some point thanks so, uh, yes, I, I, Priya had to leave and she's been also uh, coordinating part of this activity. So uh, she says goodbye to everyone. Uh, well, I, I have to end by uh, acknowledging uh, the, uh, the presence of uh, Professor Jayan Nalikar, who has been one of the best uh, science scientists and science uh, popularizers of the country. And I remember seeing such a feed about 10 years ago uh, or 20 years ago, in fact, <laughs> the time has passed uh, and, and seeing him on TV live doing a very similar thing. And it's been an uh, aspiration to do the, do the same. And I'm glad that this chance has come to us. I hope this doesn't continue that we have to do everything online forever <laughs> because of uh, various kinds of new viruses that keep coming up. Uh, but uh, this has definitely been uh, an ex great experience and we have learned so much about uh, technology, uh, not just of seeing the eclipses, but also showing eclipses and sharing uh, a lot of science with people. We will con keep continuing do and doing this. The ASI POEC and Ayuka SIPOP and all the members from IAA outreach team also and the other uh, groups who have uh, taken efforts to go out <coughs> in the field and show us these fields, uh, feeds. Uh, we promise that we'll keep bringing you all these events, whatever uh, happens, and uh, we'll keep inspiring you and uh, sharing with you all these excitement forever. So with that, uh, let me close this session, and we'll show, keep showing you the Hanle, lovely uh, sun from Hanle, which has now got, <laughs> completely gotten rid of the moon. So uh, keep enjoying this, and we'll join you again. Uh, do subscribe to our channel and uh, we look forward to many more resources that we share online with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.
solar eclipses, especially in India, have had uh, associated with them many myths. One of them being that um, one should not sleep during the eclipse time. Um, the reason given being that um, if you sleep, it will cause um, diseases or um, any other health uh, ill effects. Now we can we can try and analyze this from a scientific viewpoint and understand why this uh, understanding doesn't have any scientific basis and is just pure superstition. So sun, if we look at the system like sun and earth and we are living on earth, uh, question is how does sun impact us? Sun can impact us in a everyday life in three ways. Um, one, we affect we feel the effect of gravitational force of sun because of which we earth along with us is rotating around. The other thing is there is a light that we are receiving from sun which causes day and night. And the third minor uh, way in which sun affects us is from the particles that uh, sun ejects which reaches our atmosphere and uh, that has some impact on earth, earth system. Now if we look at uh, solar eclipse as such. Um, there is no change as such in terms of the gravitational force that we are experiencing from the sun. Uh, in terms of light, we, one can think of the solar eclipse as sort of a light uh, night time. So night time doesn't have any effect on human health as we know. So there is no reason why we should think that there should be effect of uh, a solar eclipse on uh, our health because of darkness caused by it. And the third part being the what about the particles? In fact, when solar eclipse happens, the number of particles that is reaching Earth from Sun reduces because the Moon is blocking a major major part of it. So, if so, then as I, uh, if you look at this uh, solar eclipse in terms of these three viewpoints, then what the, then one reaches a conclusion that there sh is no reason why it solar eclipses will affect our health if we sleep or we don't sleep, basically it doesn't have any impact on our daily uh, health. Doesn't matter what we do. It's like any other day. So people should do what they do normally instead of bothering about what will happen if eclipse is happening right now. Since solar eclipses have no bad effect on human uh, affairs of health or anything else, and it's a beautiful uh, spectacle of nature that we get to see once in a few years um, I would request or I would suggest everybody to reach out to the science community centers whichever is near you and um, watch that uh, watch this event uh, and enjoy it. Welcome everybody to this special session on the annular solar eclipse coming up on 21st June which would be the next Sunday. We are here from the Inter University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics and I am Sameer Dhurde and I am joined by my colleague Sonal Thorve here to discuss some aspects of the eclipse, how to see it, what are the scientific and historical significances of eclipses in the past and the present and also to give you lots of details about if you are in the belt of the eclipse how to see it and if you are watching anywhere else from India what to do so that you can enjoy this beautiful spectacular event. So we have devised this session in a way that it will be like a discussion than, rather than a lecture. And of course, we will try to emphasize certain aspects and certain uh, concepts of the eclipse through various demos and diagrams and activities. In fact, if uh, you are a teacher or a student, uh, you could in fact find out ways in which you could yourself do some study during the eclipse which is happening and rather than succumbing to all the superstitions and all the bad things which are being uh, rumored about the eclipse so that you don't see it. Rather than that, you should actually go out and actually do something. Uh, 
uh, you can uh, do some productive work and of course uh, we are in a very difficult situation these days with the coronavirus affecting everyone in their lives we are all in lockdown and we are following a lot of social distancing and other safety precautions so this eclipse was something we were uh, hoping we could all see uh, all together and enjoy in groups but i don't think that will be possible however let's see how we can enjoy it individually and also get others to see it but safely not just from the point of view that we should not hurt our eyes but also from the point of view that we should also not catch any disease around us so sonal we had recently uh, witnessed a uh, part of an annular eclipse uh, back in december to, uh, and 26 december it was just after the christmas night so maybe you should start uh, by describing your experience uh, of that eclipse and other ones yes sure so uh, it was very exciting event for all of us uh, it was a cloudy day almost everywhere in india people had traveled a long distances to observe the annularity of this eclipse so we also had traveled a lot we went to vinad in kerala from where annular solar eclipse was going to be visible and then there were so many people who were excited to see this eclipse they were ready prepared with the solar goggles the safe uh, method to observe the solar eclipse and we all were looking to the skies it was a cloudy day there there was raining in many places nearby but uh, there was a natural filter and we could observe a few phases of this eclipse unfortunately we could not see the annularity from there from uh, the place where we were but we could see some phases of the eclipse and that was also very exciting because it is a rare event and to observe the sun getting eclipsed by the moon so seeing the phases of the sun was itself an exciting thing for everyone so we all enjoyed it a lot right it looks like almost uh, a crescent moon but uh, you know, with a yellowish tinge maybe in the sky yeah I, i agree it's quite amazing even if the sun is hidden partially that itself must be such a such a great feeling to see and many times people don't see this and i i feel like they are missing out on a lot of things and as we are eclipse chasers so we we travel to actually see an eclipse and there there are lucky people who are there on the eclipse belt but don't even step out of their house to see it so i i don't know how how did that come i mean how did this fear of the eclipse come what do you think sona so uh what i think personally is uh, it i'm telling you from my personal experiences so uh, i have observed an eclipse when i was a kid it was in 1995 a partial solar eclipse and it was visible from karnataka i was at my grandma's place and people there didn't know that why these eclipses occur what is the reason behind it all people are aware of is in a daytime the sun goes off or it gets darker which is kind of uh, what we can say threatening thing the sun which comes up every day morning shows up in the sky and then it lights the whole thing and we get sunlight it is there for a whole day and then it sets to come back again the next day but it never gets dark yeah our, our source and of energy and light suddenly goes off I'm, i'm sure yes. that cause yes yes so i think uh, not knowing the actual reason can be the main uh, what we can say main base of fear in people so that is where it all might have started the fear of getting the main source of our energy dark right. and without any notice and without uh any knowledge yeah i think so so that's the crux of the discussion that without knowledge we start fearing and that's why we should always try to get more knowledge more information about something rather than fearing it 
of course we should be careful <laughs> but not uh, <laughs> blindly uh, avoiding something just because we don't know about it i think that's that this is a prime example of such a incidence in nature and i'm sure over the years over over the ages people have seen eclipses and uh, people just divide those people saying oh they are scientists so they can risk seeing an eclipse and we are we are we are just uh, lay people we are uh, afraid of it and let's not take a risk i think that need not be the case because if for ages people have observed eclipses and we have not seen anything bad happening right because i'm sure you must have heard things like okay uh, somebody predicting that okay there will be a disaster during that eclipse that lunar eclipse or this solar eclipse right in fact this month right. we are having three eclipses two of them are yes. in fact really faint and we would hardly even notice it if uh, we were to look at the moon uh, with our naked eyes we won't see the eclipse but they are being uh, rumored that there are three eclipses uh, happening this month and that's why uh, all this you know uh, bad situation is there uh, on earth well they are not related in any way right mm -hmm. and uh, i'm sure as, as a teacher uh, sonal you must be explaining it to people about how the eclipse really happens and uh, what i have heard of and, and read about the history of observations uh, that even thousands of years ago people had seen eclipses had noted them down and it was only a few people who were afraid of them who wanted to keep the fear of these eclipses in people's mind because of their own motives maybe and they uh, they, they they made stories about them i think but uh, right now we can, we have the knowledge in fact i think uh, aryabhatta was also uh, a scientist from the of indian origin who actually was able to say that the eclipses are a game of shadows right so it's the shadow of the moon which stops us from seeing the sun and uh, even our modern and respected scientists like kepler and uh, halley who were the first people to kind of explain these things scientifically uh, with, with proper understanding of the rest of the universe uh, also have proven to us that it's nothing to be feared but how 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 do you uh, explain uh, sonal uh, how would you explain to me uh, about how the eclipse happens in space so that i don't get uh, this fear about this event okay so uh, let me use some things lying around me so i can show you uh, how eclipses actually occur if you go to space okay if you look from the perspective of being in space what will happen so, so basically are, uh, basically the the things involved are the sun moon and the earth i think uh, yeah. if we take a mm -hmm. outside view i think it will look better right that's what uh, <laughs> we should do right <laughs> right, right so uh, yeah so basically we need sun we need sun moon and earth so uh, let me just switch my camera on the rear side i hope you can see all these objects <laughs> yeah so these are the objects lying around me so this is just um, lid of a bottle and i have uh, another lid of a bottle which is stick to this place okay wow. i just stuck it using a cello tape double sided tape so this is a bigger one you can see and as compared to this lid this lid is very small so can you see it clearly is that uh, okay so there are two lids one is smaller one is bigger and uh, one of yes. them is uh, movable one of them is fixed yes so basically we have two lids over here one is the bigger one and here you can see a smaller one it is stuck to a brush using a tape again okay so this is movable and this one is fixed okay so what we all know is our moon which is going around the earth is much smaller as compared to the sun just like this lid if you compare with this lid the pink one the yellow lid is very small as compared to the pink one of course these are not the scaled uh, objects scaled to the actual diameters of the sun and the moon 
our camera will be acting as earth so whatever the camera will see is going to be uh, the view from observer point of view so when the moon while going around the earth comes in between the sun and the earth it uh, it just uh, becomes an obstacle so it blocks the light coming from the sun and what happens when light from a source gets blocked we get shadow of the obstacle in the opposite side of the source so the shadow of the moon will be casted on earth so right now the part which is getting blocked by this smaller lid is in the shadow of the moon so here this part can be seen as eclipsed so when moon comes in between the earth and the sun i'll show it again when the moon comes in between the sun and the earth solar eclipse happens as you can see that here are the two lids one is the pink one which is bigger as compared to this yellow lid so same is the case with our sun and the moon moon is much smaller as compared to sun but at the same time moon is much closer to the earth as compared to the sun so if you see the moon can actually block the sun which is much bigger than the moon so coincidentally even if the moon is 400 times smaller than the size of our sun moon also happens to be 400 times closer to the earth than the sun and this makes moon appear as big as the sun when we see from the earth this is the reason why when moon comes in between the earth and the sun it can actually block or cover the whole disk of the sun and we see total solar eclipse so you can see it again here is the lid which is very small as compared to the pink one but this moon of ours can completely cover the view of the sun as seen from the earth this is how we can see total solar eclipse even if the moon is tinier than our sun now let us see that this upcoming solar eclipse or the past which we were talking about uh, the it was annular solar eclipse annular means you see a ring and why does that happen so what is the reason behind annular solar eclipse when moon is at a particular distance it appears the same size that of the sun but we all might have heard or learned that moon doesn't revolve around the earth in exactly circular orbit it has an elliptical orbit which means the moon sometimes goes away from the earth while sometimes it is closer to the earth so when the eclipse occurs while moon is a bit away from the earth what you can see is the annular solar eclipse here you can see the ring of that pink lid or of our sun which can be seen around the moon so only the light which is blocked by the moon that is casting the shadow on earth and we can see the annular part of the sun or the ring of the sun which is called as annular solar eclipse so this is the reason why we can see annular solar eclipse since the moon is a bit away from us the angle the moon makes with our eyes is a bit smaller than the angle sun makes with our eyes and this angle is also known as angular size of the object so in annular solar eclipse 
moon is having a smaller angular size as compared to the sun dips the angular size of the moon and the angular size of the sun are almost equal so that moon covers the sun totally so annular solar eclipse is going to look like okay that was a great uh, jugad and kind of a, a good uh, use of uh, local resources to explain such a heavenly uh, uh, occurrence in the sky well i think we know about the elliptic orbit of the moon but and also of the earth but we never think about it deeply and the things it may be causing and uh, although it's it's school textbook material its effect on the celestial happenings is never kind of considered but this is a very good reminder of that i'm not talking about the effects like uh, astrologers would tell you like uh, effects on your uh, marks in in school or business uh, or something like that but uh, that thing doesn't happen but of course as you told us that because of the distances changing due to the ellipticity of the moon's orbit even of the earth's orbit uh, sometimes it causes some effects uh, we can have interesting uh, uh, interesting events like the annular solar eclipse and in fact i think the uh, the moon was at its farthest distance just uh, two days back or a few days before the annular solar eclipse uh, if it is very close to that point where the moon is the farthest from the earth we will get the smallest annular solar eclipse but if it is just at the right distance but slightly missing the this sweet point where the moon can cover the sun we will get an annular solar eclipse and it will be almost complete so i think this 21st Jan june eclipse is going to be one such thing where we'll have almost 98 or 99% coverage of the sun but we'll have that tiny bit of ring visible and that's why it will become an annular eclipse rather than the very sought after total solar eclipse and india has been <laughs> so lucky i would say to have two such eclipses passing uh, its lands in fact uh, the shadow that you described i think <clears throat> covered some parts of southern india in uh, december last year and now we are expecting it to uh, pass over some lands of the northern portions of india on 21st june starting early in the morning and i think reaching maxima around close to the noon time so i think uh, we should all discuss and talk about this eclipse right now and also go out and try to see the eclipse with some safety precautions taken so i think sonal you are an expert at describing what activities to do in school etc uh, but are there any special eclipses that uh, are very important scientifically because many times we are only told about the negative thing of things about eclipses and uh, there are of course nobody to check whether there's been an earthquake or a tsunami or a <laughs> volcano erupting during an eclipse but i'm sure there are good things which definitely happen during eclipses and uh, it was important not just to the scientific community but to the humankind can you describe uh, any any such thing sonal so uh, yes as you said uh, uh, eclipses actually hold significance in uh, very important discoveries like uh, the one which occurred about 150 years ago it was 18th august 1868 the eclipse was uh, visible from india so few scientist astronomers actually traveled long distance for months and came to india to observe that eclipse so one of them was jules jensen and he observed this total solar eclipse from guntur in india and this eclipse led him to the discovery of an element helium so helium is the only element we have found outside outside the earth which is discovered outside the earth so uh, when we talk about discovering element which means we are talking about spectra 
as I'm just giving an analogy uh, for um, understanding purpose. Like every human being has different fingerprints. So fingerprints are used for individual identity. Each and every element in a periodic table, which we learn in schools, they have their different uh, or a particular spectra. And while observing this total solar eclipse, there was a new spectral line, which was uh, observed by Jules Janssen. And this wasn't matching the spectra which was observed was not matching to the spectra of any other element we had discovered till that time. And then uh, after uh, the observations done by other scientists too, it was confirmed that this was some new element. And since this element was discovered while observing the solar eclipse, it was named as helium. As helios is the helios. name for sun in Greek, yes. So it was named helium. So this is one of the major eclipses which is celebrated across the world. I think the other eclipse uh, that I personally like uh, and, and which has just in fact finished a century uh, <laughs> last year. Yeah, I would like to that, that was also hear very, the story. Very exciting and, yes. uh, in fact, it's it's. Uh, I mean, helium is a very important element and is being used so much in technology. And this other uh, eclipse, which proved another theory, was also very important. So, yes. the hint is 1919. Right. So, the another historic eclipse is 29th May 1919 eclipse. So, this eclipse is personal favorite of many of the astronomers like us. This eclipse was a total solar eclipse and it was visible from a few parts of South Africa. So again, astronomers, uh, a team of astronomers led by Sir Arthur Eddington, who was a well-known astronomer, uh, they traveled to Africa to observe this eclipse. And again, Many astronomers have faced this. Most of the times, weather is not at all suitable. So it again <laughs> becomes a kind of thrill to observe or to get to observe the eclipses in such a weather, just like we had last year. So that eclipse also had similar history. It was a stormy day and it was heavily raining. But during that, while the eclipse was occurring, Eddington got a window uh, when sky was clear and he could observe and he could photograph the eclipse in its totality, phase of totality. So while it was, to sun was totally eclipsed, he got some photographs wow, and, yes, and some very, uh, what we can say, interesting things came as a conclusion after those photographs were checked and analyzed. So what he found was the stars which are beyond the sun, which should not be visible to us because those are beyond sun and beyond our sight. He had captured multiple images of those stars on his photograph. So that they means be behind the sun and uh, not visible. Yes. But, uh, they, they yes, so oh. right. So, since those stars were behind the sun, not visible, but still we got multiple images of those stars on the photograph. So, this is possible in only case when the light from that star is coming and getting bent to around the sun and reaching to our uh, line of sight. So this tells us that light got bent around the sun, which was predicted by Einstein's theory of relativity. That light gets bent around the massive objects. And sun is a star, which is a massive object. It has a mass this of about 10 to the power 30 kg. Wow. 
Wow. <laughs> yeah, the sun is huge. And and this yes. is quite almost like a mythological story for the scientists. Right. You know, yes. uh, several versions of it exist uh, about what may have happened, whether the stars were behind the sun or just side of the sun, and how right. much they moved, etc. But the main thing is that it this particular observation of an eclipse actually caused a big uproar in the scientific community, where. Uh, uh, where whatever Einstein was talking about was given a very concrete proof, not just uh, with things on the earth, but with observations of happenings in the sky. And <clears throat> what his theory had predicted was actually seen. Well, there's nothing better which could happen to a theory than an observation suddenly proving it right. So, and then of course, uh, after that, it's all history and uh, Einstein, of course, uh, not just because of his quirky ways, but because of his actual genius, uh, he became very world famous. And the theory of general relativity is right now driving a lot of things in our space technology. So yes, uh, I think we can say that this eclipse actually proved to be very lucky for Einstein and Eddington, who was of course also became a very famous astronomer. <clears throat> and today it's actually helping us in our daily life even because uh, things like GPS satellites etc are held up there in the space uh, because they have these general relativistic corrections happening which allow them not to lose their orbits around the earth because of these general relativistic corrections. And so I think uh, we can safely say that eclipses uh, have hardly ever been bad for anyone but they have definitely been good for two important reasons in science. Yeah, so right. I, again, I mean, I, I keep stressing this point that eclipses are some way, in some way uh, neutral, but in these examples, they actually turn out to be lucky if anybody actually believes in luck. Yes, sure. And so this is the significance of observing eclipses. Of course, uh, now people can say, okay, fine, so eclipses are properly understood. We have uh, found other things uh, during solar eclipses particularly like uh, we found out the structure of the corona, we've got really good pictures of the, uh, uh, of the atmosphere around the sun and there are several mysteries which have come about uh, from the observations of this corona. In fact, nowadays there are spacecrafts which are in space which cause an eclipse of the sun artificially for their camera every day <laughs> and they take right. something called a coronagraph. So, uh, so we are studying the sun uh, from space and using the same thing called an eclipse, right? So something very similar to the moon coming in between the earth and the sun happens there where a small piece of a disc is brought in between the sun's image and the camera, right? So we are still using eclipses. There is quite a significance in still observing, uh, if not the real uh, eclipses uh, which happen very rarely on the earth, but also we are doing them artificially in the sky. So scientists do realize that this is quite important. However, as I just said, on the earth they are rare and for us people who are not space tourists or who do not have a SpaceX rocket, we cannot go up there. So how should we see this particular eclipse which is happening now? Right? And what are the details of it? I think it is important to uh, at least know about it if uh, the eclipse is going to pass through your place at least uh, you should know about what kind of phase of the sun will be seen and if you happen to uh, understand that you are in that particular belt where the ring of the sun will be seen maybe you should make some efforts to at least see that ring so uh, sonal i think uh, we should uh, also discuss about what are the ways of seeing an eclipse safely yes right you're right so yes uh, before uh, yeah before going to how to watch eclipse safely and what are the precautionary measures you uh, one should take uh, what uh, we can do is we can start with where to find out this information that yes, wherever yes. you are on uh, on this planet if this eclipse is visible for you uh, from your place and what will be its nature it is is it going to be an annular eclipse or is it 
that the partial eclipse will be visible from your place. So how can we find out? Can you please uh, just share how to find out these things? Oh, of course. Yes, we should get information about the eclipse first. And so for that, my favorite resource is the website of the Astronomical Society of India, which is particularly for this particular annular eclipse that is going to happen. So that link is uh, found in the description below. But uh, other than that, uh, you can also download an app on your phone. The app can be found easily on Google Play Store. It is by one of my friends uh, and uh, colleagues, Alok Mandavgane. He has worked with the Astronomical Society of India to make this app, which gives you proper details about this annular solar eclipse. So it's called annular solar eclipse and easily available on the Play Store. So this is made for Android devices. And after you install it, you basically have to give details like what is your longitude latitude uh, through your GPS. And it can allow you to calculate what kind of phase of the eclipse that will uh, be seen at your own place. Other than that, of course, it gives you the whole map of uh, the places where the eclipse will be seen and you can click anywhere on it and get the phase of the eclipse. Phase is something which uh, describes the kind of shape or the hidden part of the sun. So it will show you a simulation of how the sun may look like at the maximum time of the eclipse at that place. It will show you when it will start, when it will be in the middle, when it will be uh, going to end. Right? So these are different uh, details that you can find right from one app page about the annular solar eclipse coming up. Other than that, there are various uh, international level resources available on the internet. One of them is uh, the, the website called timeanddate.com. So it is another uh, favorite website that I visit often for various details about the sky. And of course, they have a good coverage of the uh, annular solar eclipse coming up. They also have coverage of many, many different kinds of uh, eclipses that are coming up or have been before. One more useful resource on the internet is the website by uh, Javier Joubier. So yes, he's a French uh, scientist who's been working on predicting uh, the eclipses, but also he has been working on making the data about it accessible.